Hey y'all, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing today? Let me pull up my little overlay. Hey y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Make sure my mic work. All that work. Then I got to go live on TikTok. Can you guys hear me clearly? Can you see the screen? Let me pull up the uh, slideshow to see if you guys, to make sure you guys can see that. Can you guys see everything clearly? Hey, y'all. So if you guys want to join the webinar, it is on the YouTube channel. It is, I suggest that you go over to YouTube because you're able to see my screen and it's like a, a real webinar. You're not going to be able to get the full experience on TikTok at all. How do you do it? Okay, are you guys ready? Y'all ready? I just had to make sure it was set up everywhere. I had to make sure we were good. So today, as promised, we are going to be discussing how to properly challenge collections. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Let me make sure my mic is clear and not too loud. Um, all right, looks like, okay. Looks like we're good on the mic. Okay, perfect, perfect, okay. So we are just going to like literally get started because I, it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a long night. So that's why I had already prepped and told y'all like, make sure you grab your wine, make sure you grab a notebook, a pen, a highlighter, a laptop or however you going, you want to take notes because this is going to be a long one. And not only is it going to be long, it is going to be jam packed with information. And um, anyone who has ever attended an educational um anything from me, a webinar, whatever it is, you know that I like to give very detailed information. And because I am a visual learner myself, I like to do it in form of a web, like webinar fashion. Like I like to show you exactly what I'm talking about so that there is no confusion um, because it just doesn't click for me until I can see it visually. So that's how I prefer to teach, which is why I wanted to do the webinar today. I wanted to make this webinar free. So this is actually going to be our um, one day of my credit bootcamp is basically going to be a free version of that, which is the day two collection. So this is completely free, completely free, and it's going to be still jam packed with information. All right, so let's get started. Make sure you guys go over to YouTube um, because that's where you're able to see the screen. Let me type that in really quick before we get started. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. Let me just type this in really quick and pan it. Where's my comment? Okay. All right. Oh, sh yeah. Okay, y'all. All right. How to dispute collections. How do you dispute collection accounts? Um, there are a lot of methods to disputing collection accounts. Um, depending on who you ask, you might get a different answer from every single person, to be honest. I always like to say that there is no one way to skin a chicken. Like if my way is different from yours or what you have heard in the past, that's OK. Like, honestly speaking, it's OK. It doesn't mean that someone else's way is wrong or right or vice versa. I'm just going to tell you my way and the strategies that I particularly like to take and advise individuals to take. Um, these strategies have led me to when we're talking about specifically collections, there has easily been over easily been over 50,000 collections that has been deleted Um just following my direction in my or using my like my DIY kits or just any information that I've presented. So um, it's safe to say that I'm just very skilled in challenging collections. It's something that I have always had a specialty in. Um, for those of you who are not aware and who are not familiar with my platform, I'm a board certified credit educator. So for years and years and years, my only job was to find out how to read and interpret the consumer laws in order to promote deletions. Um, and I'm talking like I was like heavy in it, like I'm studying the consumer laws. And yeah, I, I was like that deep into it. So 
it's literally my specialty. It's something that I am just really good at. I'm, 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 I'm good at what I do. So I'm going to give you guys my strategies tonight and you're able to use it in like literally tangible advice that you guys can like start taking today. Like it's no BS. It's like straight to the point. So let me get started. Okay. Okay, so first off, what is a collection? So a collection is an account that you fell behind on the payments and your creditor, the original creditor who you signed the contract with, they have decided to send it to a collection agency. When they send it to a collection agency, the collection agency's job is to collect on the company's behalf and get the money from you. So they're literally there to call you to try to get you to set up payment arrangements to, to try to re retrieve some of the monetary loss that the company took by sending it to collections, right? So their entire job is to get your money. And the reason why I want to make that very clear is because when they are calling you, no matter how nice they sound, no matter how threatening they sound, because you can get one of the other, you have to understand that their sole job is to get money from you. So how they do that, there are certain ramifications around that and, and different things that they can and can't do. And we'll discuss those. And things that you it's important for you to know, because a lot of times these collection agencies are violating your rights and most people don't even realize that they are. So we're going to get into that. So, yes, a collection account is just an account that has went to a derogatory status. A derogatory status means that it is considered bad, meaning that there was some part of the payment history that was not paid. It's blurry. Um. Yeah, I don't know how to not make it blurry. It don't look blurry to me. Okay, let me try one more other thing. Maybe it'll be better if I do it this way. Is that better? Is that clear? They were saying it was blurry. I wanted to fix it before I start going. Is that better? Okay, yeah, good. All right. So a collection account is generally reported to the credit bureaus and it will have a negative impact on your score. So it has to be a third party. Typically, a collection agency is going to be a third party company that was hired on behalf of the original company. Right. So third party means that they are not the original source of the account. They are not the OG creditor. When you hear me say OG creditor, I am talking and referring to the original creditor. They are not them. They are a third party company that is getting third party information to collect on this account. And that's just going to be something that is in very that's very important to remember because throughout this webinar, we'll bring I'll continuously bring that up. So I just wanted to make that clear up front. OK. Um, first, before we even start talking about how to properly dispute a collection account, you need to know that there are different types of collection accounts. The thing is, what I find is a lot of people will try to start disputing collections and they'll try, think that they can dispute all collections the same. And you just can't because there are different types of collections. So there are two main types that we're going to go over today for the sake of time. You either going to have your debt buyer or you're going to have a debt collector. So the difference is a debt collector is going to be the traditional collection agency. These are going to be the companies that you're likely already used to dealing with. They're going to call you. They're going to try to get you to set up a payment arrangement. They are going to try to get you to make a promise to pay, to settle, to whatever. They, these are typically going to be the companies that are constantly trying to get in contact with you so that they can you know, absolve the debt in some way, form or fashion. Right. Um, again, these are going to be third party companies that is collecting on behalf of the original company that is considered a debt collector. They are literally hired to collect the money. It is not their account. They do not own the account. They typically don't have jurisdiction on how much they can accept on the account. Um, the, the original creditor typically will give them like a range and just like a, 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 the lowest number that they are willing to accept. With debt collectors, they have a smaller negotiation window for most, for the most part, for the most part, right? Because they are third party and it's not their account, right? But then on the flip side, the other type of collection is a debt buyer. A debt buyer is the one that's dangerous. It's the one where you're in shark waters and you need to watch your steps or you're going to get your ass bit because a debt buyer is a company that purchases the debt from the original creditor, purchases it. So that means that that is their debt. They have full say so on this account. If they want to sue you, if they if they want to um, accept the settlement, if they want to delete it off your credit report, it is up to the debt buyer. 
a real life example of a debt buyer and a company that you guys are probably familiar with are companies like Midland Funding, companies like um, PRA, Portfolio Recovery Associates. These companies typically will specialize in only purchasing debt. They are typically going to be known as your debt buyers. They only usually go after charged off accounts. So let's say you had a Capital One account that was charged off. Midland Funding is going to be one of the people who is going to try to buy that account from Capital One. They like to buy previous charged off accounts because those are the account types that are easiest to sue you for. It's way easier for them to sue you and win on an account that was previously charged off, being that a charged off account can only be obviously sold by the original creditor. Right. So because they now own this account with buying the account, they purchase all of the documents that came with it. So when it comes to challenging collections that are from a debt buyer, it's hard. It's way harder. It's way harder. It's almost like challenging the, challenging the original creditor, which is AKA challenging a charge off. It's way harder to challenge a debt buyer because they own the account. So now you are dealing with essentially the source of information, the same as you would if it was a charge off account. So these are going to be the main two different types of collection accounts. When you have a debt collector, it's with a third party collection agency. These are going, going to be the ones that are typically easier to dispute, easier to be deleted. You're going to see them getting deleted at a higher rate than a debt buyer. A debt buyer are going to be those hard hitting accounts that were probably, there were probably credit cards or auto loans or repossessions are typically going to be with debt buyers when you see them in collections on your credit report. So it's very important that you know the difference. And then the only way that you're able to know the difference is because debt buyers are going to come from a previous charged off account. So if you look at your charged off account, if it says that the account was sold or transferred to another seller or another creditor, that means that the account was 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 purchased. Right. So that means that the account is no longer in the hands of the original creditor. It's now in the hands of the debt buyer. They fully own it. So you have to deal with them. If you ever call your original creditor and say, hey, can you accept the payment on this account? Because I can settle this account. And they say, no, we don't ha we we don't have this account anymore. We don't have any say so on. Um, or priority to take payment on this account, then you know that they sold it to a debt buyer. So those are kind of like small context clues that you can use to determine if your debt is with a collection agency or a debt buyer. Another um, good example is if you are calling, if you can always call your original creditor and if they say that they do, they no longer own the account, then you know it's with a debt buyer. If they do own the account, then it's with a collection agency. All right. All right. So what makes a collection verified? So you're going to hear this word verify a lot quite a lot. You're going to hear them verified, right? You're going to hear the word verified. Verified to the credit bureaus means that they have verified that the information on the account or on the report is accurate as it pertains to the account that you are disputing, right? So for instance, if you send the credit bureaus a dispute letter and then they reply to you saying that the account was verified, that means that the account is not going to be deleted. They have seemed to believe that they have some, some sort of inclination that they believe the account is yours. They believe all of the information that's included on the account is correct. So they are going to side with the, the creditor, right? That means that you pretty much lost that round of battle when they tell you that the account was verified, right? So a lot of people ask, what is actually considered verified when it comes to the law? Because people say a lot, the credit bureaus do a lot, and it doesn't always align with the consumer laws. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of things that they do are typically going to be violations of your consumer rights, but they do it so often because they know most people don't know, right? But y'all gonna know today. Y'all gonna know after today because I'm gonna put y'all on because they're not gonna keep getting away with it. So what makes a collection verify? A consumer paying the collection. Rule number one to disputing collections. You have to understand when you pay off a collection account, you have legally validated that account yourself. So you've done the credit bureau's job for them. Per the FCRA, when a consumer pays for a collection account, that is considered legal validation of the account. That means that that consumer agrees with every single thing on the account. You agree with how much you they, they are claiming that you owe. You agree with the payment history. You agree with every single thing on the account. Therefore, you have went and made a payment on it, right? So when you pay a collection, you're going to find that that's going to be the probably like the hardest type of collection that you're going to challenge. Like, honestly speaking, I always make a joke and say it's, it's easier to get a bankruptcy deleted than a paid collection. And honestly, it's not really much of a joke only because after a collection is paid it's it's a headache it's a headache and we'll definitely get into details about how to challenge a paid collection so don't give up all hope is not lost it doesn't mean that they don't get deleted i've gotten thousands of paid collections deleted but we'll talk about that when we get to it but understand that it definitely is harder to delete a paid collection okay 
Another thing that's considered a verification in the eyes of the law, a copy of the original contract. So if the company, the collection agency sends you a copy of your original contract that ha that is bearing your signature, whether that's an e-signature or a physical signature, that is considered validation. I'm sorry, that is considered verification of the account that, or validation, right? Real quick, I'm going to take a pause because uh, I keep forgetting to do this. Make sure you guys are liking the video. If you guys are finding any sort of value with this video, double, triple tap it. Um, that's how you are able to to show me any sort of love. I never ask for donations or anything. I would definitely appreciate likes, pushes me up in the algorithm and it just helps my channel and all of that. So if at any point during the live you find anything that I say valuable, just pay me in likes. Just pay me in likes. That's all I want. Your presence is my present. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm just going to keep going. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome. You on the money team now. We finna get your credit together. So. I'm going to keep going. All right. So the next thing that makes a collection verify complete and accurate account. So this is one that I want to discuss. And we got to have a conversation about this one because these credit specialists on social media will have you believing that every single account on your credit report, credit report is, is up for deletion or can be deleted. I'm here to tell you that that dream is cracked because that's not true. If, a, if an account is complete and accurate, every single thing that's, that is included in that account is reported accurately. The company can produce such documents. That collection is considered verified or validated. You are not going to probably get every single account deleted. It just doesn't work like that. It's not a perfect world. Um, just like we have consumer rights, they also have, oops, sorry. They also have rights and laws that they have to abide by as well. And if they, they are doing their part correctly, then they did their part. It can be, it's validated. You are not exempt from something being validated or verified. So that is just something that is very important to know. I don't ever, I don't teach illegal methods of repairing your credit. Never, ever. Every single thing that I teach is ethical. Every single thing that I teach is, is lawful um, and illegal. It won't get you, it won't land you in jail or court, you know? So you, it's important to recognize that, yes, some battles you probably are not going to win and it's not the end of the world. Um, we can definitely talk about in a later, another webinar about how to rebuild, even if you have collections, because that's an important, you know, webinar that I think, would be helpful to you guys but yeah you're not gonna get everything deleted and that's okay that's okay your your whole goal should be to minimize how many derogatory accounts that you do have whether that's minimizing it from 12 to 6 that's still a minim minimization and you are still going to um, benefit from that so i have to say that the last pretty much the last thing that will make a collection considered verified is a written statement from the original creditor identifying the collection agency as the owner. So let's talk about this one. This is a lot. This is one that a lot of you guys sleep on. If you ever, if you are challenging a collection and you ever receive a response in the mail stating that um, it, it'll be a letter on the company's letterhead, like it'll have their you know logo and stuff like that at the top, and it'll say we are just I, the words will be different, but basically what the gist of the letter would be is. The, this collection agency is the owner of the account or million fund and purchase the account. They have full legal rights to the account. So if the original creditor sends you a letter like that, then that account is considered validated. I mentioned that because remember when I told you guys that debt buyers would purchase the account and they have full legal right over it after they purchase it, right? That is going to typically be the letter that you get from debt buyers. So that's a, also another clue to know if you're dealing with a debt buyer or a collection agency. Typically, typically, this is not a 100 percent proof with this particular one. But typically speaking, if you get the original letter from the original creditor outlining the new collection agency or debt buyer as the owner, it means that they purchased the account. Right. So that is considered verification. All right. I hope you guys are finding this valuable. I hope I'm not going so fast. Because y'all know when I get in my zone, I'll be talking fast. So if, if I'm going fast, make sure y'all let me know. Because I'll just be on a whole tangent. Okay. By the way, I hope y'all got wine. I hope y'all chilling and vibing with me. I wish we could listen to music, but we on YouTube. So we ain't going to be able to do that. So I got to I gotta be the only entertainment for tonight. I'll sing for y'all next. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're going to be entertained. Um, So... Rules for any collection, you guys, my bad, one more break. If you are on TikTok or if you are on Instagram, know that you are only getting half the experience. We have a whole full webinar shared screen type deal on um, YouTube. Oh, I can't show you because the thing is up. On YouTube, that shows exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're a visual learner, you might find more value coming to YouTube. The YouTube channel is Road to 750. It's on the screen, Road to 750. Just come and join us live and you'll be able to get the full experience. All right. 
Oh, shout out to you, JB. Thank you for the thank you for the super chat. If you want to super chat a question, guys, I also will be addressing those throughout as well. All right, rules for any collection. This is important to know when you, when it comes to um, challenging collections. Challenging collections, guys. This slide is important to know, and these this slide is very simple. It's very simple. And it's going to be something that you are likely going to have to push the issue on because a lot of times these are going to be the small kind of like things that the credit bureaus can get wrong that they don't like to admit their fault on. So you have to really push the issue on these things. So number one, rules for any collection account. And when I say rules for any collection account, I mean that you need to get your credit report and every single collection account, you need to check to make sure that they don't have any of the following that we're going to discuss. Let me get some water. Okay, thank y'all for the likes, by the way. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Make sure you are subscribing, following, and liking. That's all I want. Um, okay, so collection accounts should not have a credit limit, meaning like when you look at your credit report, <clears throat> sorry, when you look at your credit report next to um, account the account in the account details, it should not list a credit limit. So for example, what I'm referring to is when you have a open credit card on your credit report, when you look at your credit report, it'll tell you what that limit is on the credit card, right? That means that the account is active and open. The reason why that is important because that is obviously used to calculate your utilization, right? Therefore, if it's a collection account, regardless if it was a, a credit card in the past, if it's now in collection, there should not be a reported credit limit because you don't have any line of credit with the collection agency. That is very important. It is a small detail, but this one point has literally time and time again have caused me to get and others to get collections deleted. Simply one little line, right? A collection account is not supposed to have a credit limit because you do not have a line of credit in place with the collection agencies. When it comes to collections or when it comes to your credit or anything, especially when it comes to disputing, the devil is in the details. I always say that like you, the smallest things you're, you'll see will promote the deletion rate way higher. Like it's insane. So collection accounts are not supposed to have any credit limit reported. Regardless of if it was an active credit card prior, if it's in collection, you don't have a line of credit with the collection agency. Therefore, it's illegal to report a, a credit limit. The reason why you want to make sure that that's not happening to you because that is still being calculated into your utilization, meaning not only is it messing up your payment history because it's a reported collection, it's also now messing up your credit utilization. So it's basic, it's a double whammy. It's literally hitting you twice. So you don't want any collection to report a credit limit, right? So the next thing that you want to, to look for on every single collection account is a pass due balance. Guys, I need, I need a drink of water. Watch it on YouTube and IG. Shout out to you. Okay, so when it comes to past due balances, <clears throat> let's talk about past due balances. And this rule will kind of make all of the other rules make sense, right? So I want to stop here. Collection accounts and past due balance. What does a past due balance mean in theory? Techni technically speaking, a past due balance means that you have been at least 31 days past your due date. That's what it means in terms of your credit report. A company... Sorry, y'all. A company cannot legally report a past due balance unless you were at least 31 days past the due date. For example, if you have a American Express credit card and the due date is on the first of the month, let's say you paid that on the seventh of the month, they cannot report that late payment to the credit bureaus until it until at least February 1st, if your payment was on January 1st or, or February 2nd, right? They can't report it until it's at least 31 days past due. That, that is what's considered a past due balance, right? So when we are talking about a collection account, they can't report a past due balance because they don't have a contracted due date with you. Due date means that you have signed a contract directly with the company agreeing to make a payment on X day of the month. Whenever you open a credit card or any other account, you have to agree or you, you, you will have a set due date, right? Because you have signed that contract with the company. Again, because you do not have a contract with the, the collection agency, they cannot assign you a due date. Being that they cannot assign you a due date, they cannot report a past due balance. It's, it's impossible for an account to be past due if there was never an established due date, okay? So make sure that none of your collection accounts are reporting a past due balance. This one is so important, y'all. Um, if I were to look at 10 credit reports right now, typically speaking, going off just history, 
at least six of them will have a collection that is reporting a past due balance. This is one of the bigger and most um, things, think the most common, I guess I would say the most common little mistakes that I see on collection accounts, them reporting a past due balance because it typically how the, how the collection is transferred over, it almost always report a past due balance. So make sure you are looking at your credit reports to determine if your collection has a past due balance. And if it does, that is something that you will be able to use to challenge the account that will hopefully aid in you getting the account deleted ultimately. Okay. Um, the next rule is no late payments. Now this one is my favorite one. Oh my God. This is my favorite one. And honestly, I don't know why. I think it's because it's one of those like got you's that I kind of pull on the credit bureaus a lot. Um, sometimes I like to, um, you know, prove them wrong and kind of give them a gotcha moment um, or whatever. And late payments are one of the things that I'm always arguing with them about. So let me explain. So the same as how your collection can't report a past due balance because you don't have a contract with the collection agency. All, all they are able to do is collect on the account. They, they can't say you signed a contract if you didn't, right? So they can't report a, a late payment because the same reason why they can't report a past due payment. They don't have an established due date. Therefore, how is the payment late? How are you going to tell me if a payment is late if I ain't never agreed to pay this with you ever, right? Now, Capital One could say it's late. Yeah. So Capital One, when Capital One reported that it was a late payment, they have every right to because guess what? I was late on that account. I signed a contract with Capital One and I agreed to pay Capital One every month. ABC Collections, we ain't never signed a contract. You never, ever um, received an application from me either, right? So if you don't have a contract or received an application from me and had to approve me for credit, you cannot assign me a due date, nor a late payment, nor a past due balance. So same thing, cannot report a late payment. Um, then the last thing is no monthly payment. So honestly, the same reason why they can't report a past due pay balance and a late payment, they also cannot report a monthly payment. Um, them, your collection accounts, if your collection account is reporting a monthly payment, I want you to know that that is being calculated into your debt to income ratio. It's not like, yeah, your realtor will calculate your debt to your, your collection payments and your debt, uh, sorry, in your debt to income ratio. But when it comes to your typical month to month credit reports, absolutely not. A collection is not supposed to have a monthly payment because where is the contract? It all boils down to who did I sign this contract with? It absolutely was not you. So yeah, you can't do that. You don't have the jurisdiction to assign me a due date. Therefore, you can't assign me a late payment, a past due balance, nor a monthly payment. And it's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that, y'all. Uh, let me take, hold on, y'all. I need some water. Let me see if I missed any super chat. Shout out to you, Delicious25. Thank you. Thank you. Why you ain't, you don't, you don't have no question? You just get, thank you for just giving it. If y'all have a question, you can send it and I'll, um, you know, get to it. All right. Okay. Now we talked about the different types of people who handle collection accounts, you know, the debt buyers and the collection agencies. Now let's talk about the different collection types. Okay. Whew. We just getting started. Yeah, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. I hope, let me ask you a question. Let me kind of check the temperature. Where is everybody at? Is it everything making sense? Am I explaining it in a way that you guys understand? Am I breaking it down good enough or do you need more examples? What y'all need? Let me know what y'all need and then I'm able to tailor like my teaching around that. And in the meantime, I need to hydrate. I'm finna do something disgusting. I probably edited it out when, when if I post it. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. When I get to talking, it happens all the time. If you're not new here, you used to that. We just ignore it, okay? All right. So I need to, I had to take a little break. So yeah, that was me. I see you guys saying, okay, good. You can, you, you we would appreciate if you add more examples. Got you, got you, got you. So I'll try to add more examples. I hope y'all not in a rush. I was trying to kind of speed through it, but if y'all cool, we cool, we chilling. I got all the time in the world. My kids sleep. <laughs> so we good. If y'all good, we good. All right. Um, collection type. So these are the different types of collections. All right, so number one, medical collection. Sorry if I'm getting a little too loud. I'll be forgetting I got this microphone right in front of me. So when I project my voice, sometimes it, it comes off a little loud. So I'll try not to do that. Um, all right, collection types, medical collection. So everyone is pretty much probably familiar with what a medical collection is. A medical collection is that just means that the account was originating from... Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna run it back, hold on. All right. 
All right, medical collection. So a medical collection just means that the account originated from some sort of medical service or a medical provider. So this can be a dentist's office. It can be um, plastic. So like it literally can be anything that has to do with a hospital, nursing homes and ambulance. Um, the list literally goes on, excuse me, on and on. Um, your kids' medical collections, your, your pets' medical collections. If it's on your credit report, and well, pets is... That's stretching it a little bit, but because they don't have all the obviously rights that we have as citizens. But you get what I'm saying. So medical collections. Right. Hold on, guys. I'm going to get to your questions, by the way. So then you have unpaid collections. So unpaid collections are exactly how it sounds. These are going to be your collection accounts that you have not settled or paid yet. So even if you settled an account for half or a percentage of what it is worth, it still is considered, I mean, if, if you did not settle it, it's considered unpaid. So if there is a balance on your report on that collection account, that is considered a unpaid collection. And then the opposite of that is a paid collection. A paid collection are going to be collections that has a $0 balance. Now, it doesn't matter if that $0 balance was a result of you paying the full amount or if you have received a settled amount. Like literally, even if you pay 10% of the debt, it doesn't matter. It's considered paid if you gave them people your money. Now you now you got to pay a collection, okay? Um, and then the other type of collection is going to be a time bar collection. A time bar collection are going to be collections that have surpassed the statute of limitations, and you can no longer be sued for the debt. So depending on your state, if your statute of limitations is, for example, six years, and the account has been on your credit report and the date of last activity is six years ago, that collection is time barred. A time bar collection can still legally report on your credit report, but the company, the collection agency, the debt buyer, they cannot legally sue you for that account. We'll get more into all of these, by the way, because I see a few questions about like the differences. This is just an overview. We'll get into literally each one. I told y'all, we're not leaving no stone untucked. We're not leaving no stone un untucked. I promise you. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. I just wanted to identify them first. Um, and then the other type is collections from charge off. So technically speaking, most financial educators will probably group collections from charge-offs in with um, paid or unpaid collections. I specifically put these in their own categories because I personally dispute them in a different way. Again, it's just my personal strategy. Um, and so collections from charge-offs are exactly how they sound. They are going to be collection accounts that was previously charged off. So it was previously with the original creditor. The original creditor sold it to a collection. I mean, I'm sorry. The original creditor, creditor sold it to a debt buyer. Right. So these are going to be collections that was a pre that was previously charged off accounts. These are going to well, I'll get into details when we get there. Let me get these two chats. Oh, I not mean to do that. All right. So. Hold on, y'all. It says um, if original creditor accepts payment, does that mean the collection company don't have rights to it anymore? If so. Do they have to delete it? That is a really, really, really good question. And I'll go ahead and answer that. So if the original creditor is still accepting the payment on the account, then the collection agency no longer have legal rights to that account. If the original creditor even accepts a dollar, then the collection agency can no longer legally collect on that account because it's not in their hands. It can't be two entities collecting on the same collection account at the same time. So if the original creditor has taken money, the collection agency has no other rights to the account. I hope that answers your question. And by the way, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you, Marlena. Marlena said, I sent the letters I bought in the DIY kit. I have a collection that is open with reporting. Hold on. Oh, that is open with reporting it, Equifax and Experian. Experian is saying it's right, but it's not because like you said, it's not supposed to have that. It's a bank overcharge. Hold on. I got to run that again. I sent the letters and bought the DIY package. I have a collection that is open with reporting why am I not? Why is not? I'm not. It's not clicking. Can you ask that again? Don't 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 donate again, Marlena. But can you ask your question again? Because I don't know why I'm not fully grasping the question. And I want to make sure that I actually answer it right. Experience is saying it's right, but it's not. What are they saying that's right? Oh, okay. So I have a collection. You have an open collection. It's reporting to Equifax and Experian. Experian is saying it's right, but it's not because, like you said, it's not supposed to have that. It's a bank overcharge. It's not supposed to have what? Run, run it back again, Marlena. You don't have to donate again. I will look for your name, but I want clarification on that. Thank you, Delicious25. Did you have a question? All right, so we're going to get back to it, y'all. Is this it? Yeah. Oh, that ain't it. It's this. All right, we're going to get back to it. Marlena, I'll be looking for your, for your name. 
I did not forget. Okay, so ooh, that's kind of broken up a little bit. I'll I'll talk through it and I'll make it make sense. Um, so medical collection. So now that we know the differences of the different types of collections, let's kind of get more into detail on each one. So medical collections. Medical collections are typically going to be weighed less by lenders. What that means is, is TikTok, did TikTok just cut off? Um, what that means is if you are trying to purchase a home, a car, if you are applying for a credit card, and let's say you have medical collections on your credit report, they are typically going to weigh those less than other collection types. They don't really take what I'm what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. They don't really care about medical collections. And when I say they don't really care, I mean, obviously, they would prefer you not to have any collections. And of course, it does still affect your score. But a lender is not typically going to deny you solely based on your medical collections. And even a lot of lenders will even omit it, honestly. So it honestly depends. But overall, an overall overwhelming status, definitely speaking, lenders definitely weigh medical collections less than other different types of collections. It's just how it, it, it is. Um, medical collections has a grace period of 180 days before reaching collection status. This is important. And I need y'all to write this down because this is so freaking important when it comes to medical collections. Um, because like, unlike, okay, so yes, medical collections are still regular collections, right? So they still are going to have FDCPA rights and FCRA rights and other consumer laws that you can utilize. But specifically with medical collections, you guys know that I like to challenge that very specifically, right? One of the, the small little details that I like to challenge is the grace period. So in, in about, I think it, I can get the year wrong, but it was either in 2007 or eight, um, Congress passed a medical, they, they pretty much amended the FCRA and added that medical collections has to have a grace period of 180 days before the company sends it to collection status, right? So meaning you have six months, they pretty much have to try for at least six months before they allow it to mess up your credit because it's medical. Most people can't control when they're sick. Like, you know, a lot of people don't have insurance, it, you know, whatever. So to kind of give some, give you cushion, the collection or the credit bureaus has decided to not allow medical collections to be submitted to them until it has been at least 180 days of the company trying to, to collect the money, right? Um, that's important to know because a regular collection, technically speaking, 30 days after you are late, a company can technically send it to collection. Now, most companies won't. They'll probably wait about 90 days, but most collections are almost always going to reach your report within 180 days. But specifically speaking, medical collections, they got to give you at least six months. So be aware of that when you first start receiving your medical bills, understand, just keep having that time period in your hand. Don't let six months pass and then you don't do, you don't do anything. And then it just pops up on your credit report. Your score going to go down and you panicking. No, when you get a medical bill, you got 180 days to deal with it. Try to work out an agreement. Try to call the hospital, ask them, do they have any more charitable funds that they're able to help you cover this account? There are different things that you're able to do, but you got six months to do it, so you better do something, okay? Um, another thing, typically removed once paid. So medical collections specifically, like I said, they are just a little more lenient on medical collections, okay? So with that speaking, if it's paid, it's typically, that is the only type of collection that paying it is more, is kind of beneficial. Um, because mo majority, like, sorry, let me catch my thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I'll be talking too fast. But um, usually once a medical collection is paid, it is removed. Uh, sometimes you may have to send a no obligation letter to the credit bureaus to tell them, hey, this account is covered. I paid it. Can you go ahead and remove it? They don't typically fight you on this. Okay. Um, and then also if a medical collection lands on your report and your insurance pays it after it reaches your report, the item has to be deleted by law. So that's going to be different from if you paid it. If your insurance company comes back and say, OK, yeah, we're going to cover that. If they did a reconsideration and they, you know, they they covered it. If the insurance pays it even after it already is on your credit report, you have legal standing to get it deleted automatically. It's not up to he say, she say, how she feel, how he feel. The law states if your insurance pays it after, you are liable to get it deleted. So that is also something that is important when it comes to medical collection. Hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, make sure you like the video. Make sure you follow me. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Hold on, Marlena. I am looking for your comment. And I'm going to get to the other super chats in a second. Marlena, 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 Marlena. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yaga. 
Wait, y'all. Okay, wait. I don't want to lose. Let me finish this real quick. Okay. So a lot of people ask me when I talk about medical collection, we're going to get to, we're going to get to how to dispute them. Bear with me. Bear with me. What is HIPAA protected? So when it comes to medical collections, the laws that I specifically like to use to challenge them are going to be the HIPAA laws. If you are unfamiliar with what HIPAA is, if you don't work in the medical industry, HIPAA is just your protection. It's health insurance, portable privacy act. I believe that's what it stands for. Basically it's a long, it's a long word for your protection of your private medical information. So if you go to the doctor, they can't just give your information to anyone, even if they are your family. If you're 18, they can't even give it to your parents without getting your okay first. You know, obviously depending on what is going on, but it's just your protection of your information. That's all HIPAA is. It's That's all it's there for is to protect your medical information. So how does that tie into the collection accounts? You may ask. Well, I'll tell you. HIPAA, so... Normally speaking, when I am challenging collections, I will typically lean towards trying to find some sort of FDCPA law or FCRA law that will help me challenge this collection account, right? So those are two different sets of laws. And in those two sets of laws, there's hundreds of, of, of subsections in there that you're able to use. But when it comes to medical collections, you not only have the FDCPA, you have the FCRA, but you also have the HIPAA laws, the HIPAA laws. It only goes for medical collection. So take advantage of that. I always say the more laws you have, the more the more ways you're able to challenge something. So this falls true for medical collections as well, because you, you're able to utilize HIPAA. What is HIPAA protected? Emergency room visits, dentist appointments, treatments, ambulance services, cosmetic surgery, clinics, psychologists, regular doctor's appointment. The list literally goes on. And honestly speaking, this is not even a full, complete list. Pretty much anything that has to do with doctors and your health information is protected. These are just a few examples of different different uh, things that are, are protected. Um, why did I tell you that? Because when we talk about challenging them, these are going to be the types of bills that you're able to challenge this way. All right. So rule number one, when it comes to medical collections, understand that they cannot legally exceed the explanation of benefits or also otherwise known as EOB. The EOB or explanation of benefits is pretty much like the bill that your insurance company will send you after they have, you know, went over it and, and, and decided what they are going to pay or what they're not going to pay. Right. So if you're looking at the screen, this is an example of an EOB. Um, you can tell that this was a medical bill to a patient and this patient has zero responsibility for this. Right. If, as you can see here, the patient has no responsibility. This means that their insurance company covered the full bill. Why am I pointing this out? Because if you have an explanation of benefits that says that your responsibility is zero, but then a collection agency is telling you that you owe $3 for this medical account or whatever, however much, um, th they can't do that. If the EOB says that you don't owe anything, then you don't owe nothing, no matter who said it, no matter if his name was Bill, Bob, or his uncle. You don't owe it if your EOB says that you have no responsibility. So make sure y'all keep, I always say like when you get an explanation of benefits in the mail, I just take a picture of every one of them and send it to myself just in case a company come in and try to play you because they they will try to play you, okay? Um, so then here's another example of an explanation of benefits, but this one, unlike the other one, you can see that the consumer has a responsibility. So you can see that the total charge was $135. The insurance company covered $60, which left the consumer with the responsibility to pay $75 for this account, right? So if you receive an explanation of benefits and it has a an amount for your responsibility, understand that you have to pay that. But the collection agency cannot charge entrance on medical collections. Let me repeat that. Medical collections are, are basically the only type of collection that cannot have interest, which is, again, why I say keep your explanation of benefits, because if they even try to charge you a penny over that, you're able to challenge it for uh, you're, you're able to challenge the collection agency for misrepresenting the amount that you owe. OK, that is important, guys, because I cannot tell you how many times I see collection agencies charging or putting interest on medical collections because they know most people don't realize it. And not necessarily even that they know most people don't realize it. A lot of times when it comes to collections and how they purchase the accounts in the first place, they get, they get thousands of debts at the same time. And it's not always full and complete information. Sometimes their system didn't recognize that this particular account was a medical collection. So they'll just group them with the rest of the collections and they'll add interest and do whatever else that they do. So make sure you are looking at your medical bills. If you do have any medical bills, request an EOB from your insurance provider to double check and triple check how much they are legally able to charge you with. Okay. 
All right. Let me take some water. Let me get a few of these super chats because they're building up. I don't want to miss none. Y'all going to make me feel bad if I miss some. Don't do too many. <laughs> um, Let me see. How I click on them? Wait. Why is not showing it on the screen? Yes, hit the like button. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Yes, hit the like button, y'all. It helps me. No matter what platform you're on, the likes help me. It just sends me up in the algorithm. It uh, makes the platform think that, you know, whatever content that I'm producing is, is people want to see it. So that helps a lot. Thank you, JB. You are the greatest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. Delicious. Thank you. You keep donating. You ain't even asking no questions. I feel bad. Thank you, though. I definitely appreciate it. Um. All right. Let's see. So Love and Lucy said... If original creditor accepts payment, does that mean the collection company don't have rights to it any? Oh, I already answered that. Yep, my bad. So I, I was I went back too far. All right, I see Mariana, but I'm waiting on her clarification. Um, thank you, A B Loud. Thank you, thank you. Marquita Jackson said, How can I dispute a hospital collection that have went into a turn? So we'll talk about how to dispute it in just a second. So I'm just gonna park and lot your question because that's actually the next slide that's coming up. Um, thank you, Marcia Holmes. Shout out to you, 499. Thank you so much. Um, a bylaw, thank you again. That was your second one. What if I haven't had any updates on my credit report in over 90 days? What steps should I take? So, I'm a parking lot that one only because we ain't even started talking about how to dispute them, y'all. So, I'm gonna address that when we get to that point. All right, sorry, sorry, but I am gonna address that. Um, all right, hey, I sent my dispute letters multiple times with no reply, no action. Do you think also you pretty much asking the same question as a B law? So, we will talk about the no response and all of that. Um, what can I do to make my credit score jump 25 to 50 points in six to nine months? So that is a very general question. If you are new here, guys, when you ask me questions, make sure it's specific because I want to actually be able to give you tangible advice that you're able to apply. I can't answer if like how many points you're able to get by doing something without even knowing what's on your credit report right now. Anyway, anything that I say would only be an assumption. And honestly, it would be just filled with lies because I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't do donate again, but ask me a more specific question because I want to make sure I answer it for you. All right, I'm gonna take two more, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to the presentation. So my old apartment sent inaccurate bills to collection. Need to know what to do. Some of the amount is correct, but what should I do? My old apartment sent an inaccurate bill. When you say inaccurate bill, what you mean? Like you didn't actually own the account? Well, I actually do address like what happens if you don't agree. So let me let me hold off on that real quick. Thank you, Erica. All right, yeah. So we're gonna get back to it. If you're liking this, if you're finding any sort of value, make sure you throw it a like. We are about to get into actually how you dispute it. And this is where it get hot. This is where I need y'all to make sure y'all have y'all screenshot ready because I'm going to show you the letter that you can send. If you don't want to buy the DIY kit, you are able to screenshot the letters that I'm about to show you and literally do it for free. Um, a lot of people don't begin to challenge their account because they feel like you need to have money and you don't want to pay nobody. You can't afford the letters. It's okay. Just make sure you screenshot when I pull it up. And we will discuss it now. So now we're going to talk about how to dispute medical collections. Y'all been here over an hour and we just get into how to dispute it. How you feel? You feel like I do you? I'm just playing. All right. So step one and step two, medical collections. I am very specific on how I challenge them, guys. Very specific. Um, medical collections, I will challenge HIPAA. Like I just told you guys, I send my HIPAA letters. I have a um, two-part HIPAA system that I send for all medical collections as a first or a first step, like a first action, right? So there is two letters that I'm going to show you guys. Make sure you are on YouTube because I'm going to show you guys on YouTube. Step one, number one, the first letter that I'm going to show you is HIPAA part one. The first letter goes to the credit bureaus, okay? So TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. The next letter that I'm about to show you is HIPAA part one that goes to the credit bureaus. And then the second ladder that you need to send is HIPAA part two. It's a two-part system. They work in conjunction with one, of no one another. Part two goes to the collection agency, okay? So whoever has the account, ABC collection, that's who part two will go to. The two letters that I'm showing you guys will have to be sent on the same day. You, you want to send them on the same day. They obviously are going to be in different envelopes because you're sending one part one to the, to the credit bureaus and then you're sending part two to the collection agencies, okay? Um, and I'm about to show you part one. Also, with medical collections, I typically will recommend that you only challenge one collection per HIPAA set. So this is not the letters. If you have 10 different medical collections, you cannot throw them on these same letters at the same time because they are not going to be as effective, guys. They're not going to be as effective. So I'll always recommend that one 
medical collection per HIPAA letters, right? The only exception is if you have the same collection agency, like collecting on more than one of your, your medical collections. So a lot of times with medical collections, you will have multiple different collections, right? And it'll be with the same collection agency. That's the only exception to the rule where you're able to add more than one collection per account, okay? Let me make this bigger. And if it, let me pull up. I'm gonna pull it up so it can be bigger. <laughs> Um, but what's on the screen right now, and if you can't screenshot it, just give me a second. I'm going to pull it up so it can, it's clear. Um, what's on the screen right now is the HIPAA part one letter. This letter is the, like I said, part one where you will send it to the credit bureaus um, for your medical collections only. This is not for regular collections at all. It's not for regular collections. So do not send, don't, you wouldn't send, you wouldn't put a sprint bill on the HIPAA letter. You, you just wouldn't. So this will only be for your doctor bills that are already in collection. It doesn't matter if it has not reached your credit report yet, then these letters are not going to be effective because these letters are specific to reporting medical collections. Okay. Um, let me pull it up though. Cause I know it's a little blurry when I just do it on the slides like that. Give me one second. I'm trying to find it. If you're on TikTok or, or Instagram, you are invited to come over to YouTube where you're able to see the letter and screenshot it as well. All right, let me show this. All right, guys, give me one second. I'm pulling it up. Okay, so, oops, it went, okay. Let me pull, I'm gonna pull up the medical, where is it at? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, hold on, y'all. Here we go. All right, let me make it bigger. Dun, 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 dun. Where is it? All right, y'all. Can y'all see that? Is that better? Let me. Okay. This is HIPAA Part One letter. OK, so this letter is going to go to the credit bureaus, right, for medical collections. I'm going to tell you exactly what you would need to change on this letter, because a lot of you guys were having uh, issues with filling it out or you didn't you know, understand what you were supposed to put where. Um, so number one, this letter is super easy to fill out because you only have to change one or two things. So right here in the second paragraph where it says name of medical here, this is where you are going to. Put the name of the original creditor, guys, the original creditor. So if you read the sentence, it says, I am allowed under the HIPAA law to protect my privacy and medical records from third parties. I do not recall giving permission to uh, Centara Hospital, whatever, to release my medical information. Right. So the name of the original creditor will go where it's where it's, where it says name of medical here. OK, the original credit is blurry. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me see. My bad. My bad, y'all. That might be. See, that's too big. Oops. Mm. Hold on, y'all. What about that? Is that? Is it still blurry? Y'all good? Y'all good? All right. Good. Okay. So this is part one. Screenshot it. Screenshot it. Yeah, it's still blur. Is it under the file section of the Facebook group? Yes, it is actually. Yep. If you're in a Facebook group, you can go download this letter in the file section. It's at the top of the page. You may have to swipe left. No, it's right. You have to swipe right and you will see it under the files. All right. So this is part one. So again, the name of the original creditor goes here. And then the only other thing else you would need to change on this letter is where you will put the collection account. So this is an example of how it will be. So you will put the name of the collection agency right here, and then you would put the account number. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but if not, I'll just mention it right now. You need to get a copy of your real credit report. It's free. You can get it at annualcreditreport.com. I'm going to repeat that. That's annualcreditreport.com. It's free. Um, you need your real credit report when you are disputing because you want, it, it just gives you more details that you are able to use against them, right? So, and also like the, the account numbers. And it's going to be a partial account number because they're not going to put your full account number. So if they're only giving you like 
X, 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 one, two, three, four. That's exactly what you will put on the letter. Just put it exactly how they have it reporting. All right. So and then if you had another collection with the same another medical collection with the same collection agency, you would literally just put the other one and then you would just put the account number because they'll they'll have different account numbers. So. You can charge it. You can. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, If you are on mobile devices, make sure you click the three dots and put higher picture quality, because if your phone is like lowered or whatever, it'll 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 uh, butcher the quality. So you have to force it to to make the higher quality. A lot of people were saying. So make sure it's uh, like three dots and then you push it and you put I think it says quality. Make sure that's on higher. I think it's like higher video quality or something like that. It makes it it'll make it clearer for you. Can you scroll down a bit? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give you a few more minutes to screenshot this and then we are going to, we're gonna move on to the next letter. Oh, let me make sure there, let me get some super chats while we are, while I'm waiting for y'all to screenshot that. <clears throat> All right. Um, Jay Lockett said, oh, let me, I don't wanna block the screen on y'all. Jay Lockett says, I have a collection. I have a medical collection. It doesn't have the name of what facility. It says unknown. So what do I put the letter unknown as? Um, that's if you're are you looking on an app? Like, are you looking on a website? A lot of times on websites, they won't have the original creditor, which is another reason why I do recommend that you guys go and get your real credit reports, because those are like the smaller details that they'll typically always have. Um, and again, it's free and you can download it to your phone, to your computer. You should get it same day if you're able to um, verify your identity. It's free. Annualcreditreport.com. That's the furthest it's going to zoom in before it cut off the letter. Um, I don't know your name. What does that say? It says Econtron. 2007. Thank you. Um, I had a progress. I had progressive insurance and canceled the policy and got new insurance. Now progressive is on my credit for the remaining portion of the balance. So that'll fall under a regular collection. So I'm a parking lot that until we get to that, because right now it's only about uh, medical. So we're going to challenge regular collections different. We just getting started. We just getting started. Like the video. If you have learned something, found anything that I said valuable. Um, or if you just want to show your appreciation, just throw me a like. And I certainly appreciate it. Never got noticed in the mail. Wasn't aware until I sent the report. Don't have account number because I didn't get a notice. So, guys, you got to make sure y'all have to get y'all a real credit report. Um, I should have probably led with that. My dispute method is going to require you to have your real credit report because, again, I always look at the smaller details that probably is not reporting on your online monitoring service, even if you have like a MyFICO or something like that. A lot of times it's still redacted information. So get your original credit report to get the full scope and the full picture. All right. So we are going to keep it pushing. So this is part one. And then we're going to scroll right on down to part two of the HIPAA system. Let me re. Hold on. Let me change some things so you can see it all right perfect so this is the full part two part two goes to the credit bureaus i mean i'm sorry part two goes to the collection agency so the only thing that you're going to change in part two of the hipaa system and again these are only for medical collections only um you will put name of provider which is the original creditor again um, right here, the original creditor. And then the only other thing else that you would change on this one is just like the first one, you would change this part where you will put the collection agency name, ABC Collection. That's going to be our, our mock collection agency that I'm just going to use throughout the night. ABC Collection. That just means that it's a collection agency. Um, and then you will put dash the account number. Let me scroll down so y'all can see the full thing. By the way, guys, your ID only goes to letters that you send to the credit bureau. So if you send in a letter to uh, TransUnion, Equifax, or Experian, you need to include a copy of your ID because they can refuse and you they can refuse to investigate your account if you have not identified yourself. Okay, so don't send your ID to the collection agency though ever. Um, I don't ever send ID or any other verifying information to the collection agency because they are supposed to have that information already, and I just don't like making their job easier. That will be something about that don't sit right. So no, don't send your ID to the collection agency, but you do have to send it to the credit bureau. If you sent the challenge without your ID, they can very well like say, no, we're not going to investigate this. So just keep in mind, a copy of your ID goes with any letter to the credit bureaus. I keep wanting to pick up the mic thinking it's my drink. 
All right. So that is part two of the medical. That's part two of the letters that you will use to challenge your medical collections. Not to brag on these two letters that I just showed y'all, but these two letters alone in 2021 alone, literally, I'm not exaggerating. And if you're in a group, you probably know this already. These, these, these two letters that I just showed y'all literally erased, deleted over a million dollars in debt in just 2021. From, consume, from group members' credit reports, from Credit Cousins' credit reports. This letter alone, and if you're in the comments and you, any of the, hip, uh, the HIPAA letters worked for you, um, let me know. Did, did you send these letters? Did they work for you? Sometime, and again, just with any other type of challenge, there are going to be some that these are not going to work because some, some collection agencies have their issue in order, they have their books in order, and they're able to verify the account or validate the account. Uh, Andrea said, yes, I was able to get mine deleted. Shout out to you. Let me get a super chat and we can move on. And then we're going to talk about, excuse me, I think unpaid collections is the next one. Um, let me get these super chats so I don't get too far behind. So um, DD in 1979. So he said, I received a letter from a lawyer's office, which is a judgment now years ago in the amount of $5,000. What step do I take if I'm being sued? So we're going to talk about that when we talk about the regular collections. Um, I'm going to go over that one that specific type of collection. So I'm a parking lot your question. I feel bad for parking lot your questions, but I got you. I'm gonna answer it. I promise. Um, do you freeze the secondary data companies to help with no validation? So LexisNexis and other third party entities freezing those reports does not help you with disputes with the credit bureaus because the credit bureaus still have full legal access to your third party entities reports because they are all governed under the FCRA and they are able to legally share information. So it doesn't help you dispute collections. Uh, uh, they worked for me. Yep. Got seven medical collections deleted. All mine were deleted. Okay. I see a lot of y'all got uh, your medical collections deleted. By the way, if you guys don't want to just screenshot and type those letters over, you are able to purchase the HIPAA kit. It's $10 on the website. The website is road to 750.net. You're able to purchase it. If you wait until after the live, I forgot to do this before. I'll give you guys all a 50% off discount code. So if you do want to purchase the HIPAA kit, instead of it being $10, it'll only be $4.99 for the next 24 hours for you. We're going to put the code, we're going to put the code live, L-I-V-E, and that'll be a 50% off code for any item on the website. So if you don't want to retype it, because, and you don't have to purchase it, because if you just want to screenshot and retype the letters, you can do that. Fully, you can you have my you can you can do that. Or if you just don't feel like it, if you just rather download it and plug your information and go, um, then you can purchase the HIPAA kit from the website for four ninety nine when when the live concludes because I have to set it up. Um, we're gonna move on to the next type of collection, but I gotta stop sharing this and pull the slideshow back up. So pardon me. All right, where is it at? I don't see this last show. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I already had it up. All right, I got it. Let me share the screen again. All right. Oh, yeah, I didn't even I thought I was looking at the screen. Let me pull it back up. All right, y'all good? Y'all can see that? Um, all right, so then that's just what I just showed you guys. Um, if you want to screenshot that, I'll leave it for about 10 seconds. Um, that's just part two. And then we can move on. All right. So now we're going to talk about unpaid collections, which is a very popular collection type. It's probably the most common collection type that you're going to see on a credit report. Most people will have collection accounts on their report that has a balance. So it's considered unpaid. OK, these are by the way, these are my favorite types of collection. And in my opinion, outside of medical, the easier type of collections to dispute. OK, so unpaid collection, unless prior agreement has been made with a collection agency, this debt is still considered unverified. And that's a very important point, because remember when I said the second that you pay a collection, you have verified your own debt. If you didn't pay it, then the debt is still considered unverified. Right. So the reason why I'm saying that is because if it's considered unverified, what does that mean? It means that you have a chance on getting it deleted. The FCRA, the FCRA, as well as the FDCPA says that if an account cannot be verified, then it has to be removed from the credit report. 
So unverified is a very important word. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, unpaid collection typically has the highest rates of deletion. So as I stated before, it is my favorite account type. I love seeing this. This might sound crazy to the average consumer, but when I look at a credit report and I see collections that has a balance, something in me just get to, I just get excited because I understand that that is the easier type of collection to get removed outside of medical. I just love it. It's like music to my ears. Cause as soon as I look on a credit report and I see a, a collection with a $0 balance, something inside me just dies guys. It's, it's, it's that's a headache and we'll talk about it though. So, oh, the last point was um, if you are sent any documents with your signature, it is verified. So as I as we went over when we talked about what makes a, a account collection account considered verified, if you have um, received any any signatures that is considered verified. So that's kind of like one of those things where it's like, yep, they got you. You just got to accept the L and move on. All right. So what are the steps? What is the dispute process for unpaid collections? How do I or recommend everyone to dispute them? The text is small, the way you had it at the start of the show. Oh, it's not the same. I don't know why it's not the same. You may have to, um, I'm trying to think, did I do something different? I don't think so. You may have to make sure you're, can y'all see it? Is it clear? Oh, Marlena sent her question again. Where she at? Oh, I definitely got to make sure I answer her question. Then. Mm. Marlena, put put fire emojis in front. Oh, I see it. No, why you pay again? I don't even know how to refund it, girl. I feel bad. Okay, let me answer your question real quick. It's reporting CO entirely on Experian and partially on Equifax is okay in green. And then also it's a charge off. So that's a charge off account. That would be what it's different from collection. Charge offs and collections are two different types of accounts. Um, dang, I wish you didn't ask about charge off because I was going to do a charge off live another day. I don't, well, I don't know what day because I don't have anything prepared to even talk about charge offs. But when it reports charge off every month, it's considered a repeated charge off offense. And that's how I like to challenge that. I have a letter on Instagram um, that's free. If you look on the collections highlight, is it on the collections highlight? Or the charge off highlight, you will see a letter called the repeated charge off letter. That is the letter that you you need. And I'll, you know what? I will pull it up at the end of this live if you stick around. I'm sorry if, if that's too long. I'll pull it up. All right. So here are the steps to thank and, and thank you, by the way, again, Marlena. Hold on. So here are the steps to, to dispute or challenge a unpaid collection. So step one, I always, why is why is Instagram froze? I always start my dispute process for pretty much anything outside of like medical with a bureau reinvestigation letter. You always want to start your dispute process when you are disputing collections or honestly even charge offs. You need to start it with a bureau reinvestigation letter. So one of those consumer laws that we keep um, mentioning is the fact that the process, the steps to dispute an account properly um, or the due process for a consumer to follow is to step one. You should always go to the credit bureaus first. Um, they kind of want you to go into a like, you know, a hierarchy, right? A, 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 a command like a, a, sorry, order of command. Right. Like so if you're you were in the military order of command. So the first step and the first kind of like person or entity that you should speak with about if you seem to believe that something is wrong on your credit report or if you want to just request an investigation, you're you always going to want to start with the credit bureaus. A letter to start that process is called a bureau reinvestigation letter, which is just a super short, and I'll show you uh, a short letter that's really to the point that just asks the, excuse me, just asks the credit bureaus to investigate your account. This is not going to be, I always tell people when you first start your dispute process with collections, you don't ever want to start being too like, too much for your own good. Like, don't go in and be like, according to this law and da da da, da you need to delete this because you shouldn't start off like that because. How I like to do it is I like to, first of all, not only am I following the laws, but I like to put the credit bureaus in a position where they're they're either going to have to prove themselves or I'm able to prove them wrong. This just helps with you getting items deleted. When it comes to challenging things, it, it's things that's called rounds. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Rounds just means that you're going back and forth with the credit bureaus to dispute an account. So if you challenge it, they say, nope, this is verified. That means that you need to you need to you need to respond and send a second round letter to to challenge it again to get a deletion. Right. So when it comes to rounds, you always want every single letter that you send should not only mesh with with the one prior, 
or should further be a follow up to the one prior, it should be directly challenging what they have sent you. Um, so when it comes to getting these accounts deleted and stuff like that, you t I typically got my most of my deletions between rounds four and six. That's when I typically receive the most deletions, right? And it's because at that point, you're going to see as we get further into the investigation process, you're able to be a little more, yeah, you know, you're able to kind of, kind of like, you know, hold up, don't play with me. I know my laws because this, this and that, but you always want to start off like what I consider a, a confused consumer. Hey, TransUnion, you know, I see this account on my credit report. I'm not totally sure if it's wrong. I'm not even, I'm not claiming that it's wrong. It just look a little funny. So do me a favor and do an investigation and just let me know what you find, right? Because it's important not to ever place blame on the first letter. It's important not to ever select a dispute reason in the first round. That is the biggest piece of advice that I will give you guys. And also the one of the biggest reasons why you should never dispute online. When you dispute online, whether you're disputing with Credit Karma directly with these credit bureaus, you have to choose a dispute reason. They're going to they're going to ask you, why are you disputing this? Right. And the reason why I don't ever start any of my dispute processes with a dispute reason, because the second that you specifically point out something that you believe is wrong, they no longer have to give you a full investigation, a full thorough investigation. Instead, all they have to do is prove whatever you said was right or wrong. So they only have to focus on what you said was right or wrong. For example, if you come, if this is the first round and you say, hey, Capital One, I mean, hey, uh, TransUnion, Capital One is reporting this account, but this account is wrong because I got a bill that shows that I owe this, but they saying that I owe that, right? So now instead of TransUnion having to do a full um, dispute process, I mean, I'm sorry, a full investigation to check every single thing on the account if is correct, they only have to zero in on trying to see if the balance is correct or not. And all they're going to do is go right to Capital One and say, hey, LaShonda said this account is wrong. She said that she has a bill or whatever. They're going to they're say, hey, she says that this is wrong. Capital One is going to say, no, this is not wrong because here is her final bill. Right. And just like that, that, that account is considered verified because you already went in exposing all of all of your your armor. Like you literally gave them every single thing that you had and now they only have to zero in on that. So never start your dispute process off with a reason, which is why you should not be disputing online. When you dispute on Credit Karma, they give you about 15 reasons to choose from, right? And if you think I'm lying, pull up your Credit Karma app right now. They're going to give you about 12 to 15 different dispute reasons that you're able to choose from, right? But when you zero in and look into the details of the 15, about... Eight of them are going to be you challenging the ownership of the account, but it's going to be worded different, right? It's going to say, choose this one if this account is not yours. And then ne the next option is going to say, this account doesn't belong to me. And then, then the next option is going to say, this account belongs to a relative or an ex-spouse. And then the next option is going to be, I I'm not responsible for this account. So in 10 different ways, they are tell you are saying the same thing, that this account is not mine, right? I never ever deny ownership when I'm disputing, ever. It's the easiest type of, of of dispute for the credit bureaus. That's like throwing, that's like the ball is in their court when, when you go in like that. So you don't want to do that at all. You want to make sure that you start with the bureau investigation letter. You don't give them a reason. You just want them to investigate everything because when they come back and say, hey, we did your investigation and we have determined that every single thing is right. Then you can say, is that true? Well, if that's the case, why is this wrong? Why is that wrong? Why is this wrong? So now you've put yourself in a position where you're able to directly challenge what they are saying, which will just promote you getting that account deleted faster. A whole, I said a whole lot for make sure you follow the process, no matter how point, pointless that you think a step is. Every single step that I do and recommend is for a reason, If even if you can't clearly see that reason in the beginning, right? So you always want to set yourself up to win in the long run. And this is how you do it. So step one, send a bureau reinvestigation letter. Most of the disputes are going to start off like that. And again, I'll show you guys the letters in a minute. Um, and then step two. So round two, if let's say you sent the bureau reinvestigation letter. That came back and they said that it was verified. Your follow-up should always be a bureau reinvestigation letter follow-up. This letter is just a continuation from the first letter and kind of re-challenging them, starting to kind of let them know that you're a little suspicious of the investigation, but even still, you're not giving them an exact dispute reason because you want to you want to allow them to shoot themselves in the foot, allow them to be them. We know that they're not going to give you a full investigation anyway. They're going to come back and say it's verified. I always tell people that round one letter, 
it's typically not going to result in a deletion. That's not even what you send it for. Even if you have the DIY kit, the little letter before it, the, the, the letter before the DIY kit, it literally says, when you send this letter, don't expect the deletion because this letter is not to be sent. The, this letter is not even challenging anything. So don't expect the deletion. It's not challenging anything. It's just you asking for an investigation. It's just you doing your part first, right? So then step three, if it's if the account still comes back verified as a result of your round two letter, then you will follow up with a factual dispute. And we'll get into the details on what that means in a minute. Then step four, that is where I typically will go directly to the creditor. So the law states that I need to go to the credit bureaus first. I've at, it, By the time you're in step four, you've already went to them three times. You've given them three chances to investigate the account and correct themselves. And at this point, by round four, if they have failed to do so, now you're able to go directly to the creditor. Hey, OK, I'm, I'm done playing with the credit bureaus. At this point, they they steady giving me the run around telling me that they are just getting information from you and da -da -da, back and forth. Now I'm cutting the middleman. I'm coming directly to you and letting you know that if you don't send me anything because I am knowledgeable about my rights, I'm willing to I'm willing to take it there. I'm willing to take it to the attorney attorney general. I'm willing to file a complaint if, and stuff like that. So that's where you can kind of get real buck with them. Like, no, I, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do at this point, And you are still not sending me anything. Right. So that's usually my process. And let's kind of get into the details of it. And I'll show you guys the letters. So here's that round one letter. And again, let me just go ahead and pull it up um, so you guys can see it better. Um, where is the app? Why did I close it? That was slow. Okay, let me see. All right, let me pull it back up. Which letter? What, what letter am I showing y'all? Um, what letter am I showing y'all? Oh, the uh, Bureau of Investigation. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it up. So this is round one. Again, if you are finding any value on this video, I'm, I'm that annoying person that's going to keep on asking y'all. <laughs> but if you are finding any value, if you if you just messing with the vibe or whatever it is, make sure you like the video because um, that helps me a lot. Uh, Bureau of Investigation. All right, let me, I'm pulling up the letter, y'all. That's why I'm kind of just filling in. I'm trying to pull it up right Bureau. I just got to scroll. Hold on, y'all. All right. So again, this is this is step one to your dispute process. So if you have unpaid collections, which are collections that you have not paid yet, this is the first letter that you're gonna send to start your dispute process. Start start it tomorrow. Start it tomorrow. And you don't have no excuse. It, you can't say, "Oh, I don't have the money to send." Nope. I'm giving you the letters. You have to start though. I can I can only get you to the water. I can't make you drink now. You say you've been wanting to improve your credit. You say you stressed out about it. Now you got to take action. You got to put that action behind them words. Because uh, prayer without faith is dead. Don't stop praying for stuff if you're not willing to put the work in. I'm literally giving you the blueprint. The blueprint that is tested, that work. Thousands of people can attest to the blueprint of these letters. We in 2022 take action. Like, I don't even mean to sound like that, but we. For it's a lot of people that always say, I want to fix my credit, I want to fix my credit. But then when they get the answers, they don't take, they don't, they don't put the action behind it. They don't put the action. Uh, I'm pulling it up, y'all. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh, yeah, wait. Did I pull up the right one? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm going to make it bigger. Hold on. I'm going to move the banner too. I see it's in the way. Wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good. Is that clear, y'all? Y'all got that? That's, that's good. Um, let me see. Can I monitor? Yeah, you can monitor because I don't even know what's going on. TikTok be having hella trolls. Delete any trolls. Uh, block any trolls. Shatavia. Shatavia. Um, and also let them know the YouTube channel. Okay, y'all ready? So on your screen, you will see a bureau reinvestigation letter. Again, this is a round one letter. So if you have any collection accounts, this is going to be your first line of defense when it comes to properly disputing that account. This is just a blanket letter. I'm going to go ahead and read it because it's very simple. This letter goes to the credit bureau. So it goes to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. For every collection account, you have to send three letters. You have to address each collection or each credit bureau separately. Make sure with this letter, you send a copy of your ID 
and you do not sign the letter. So all of the letters at the bottom, I'll say something like best regards or thank you for your time or, you know, some um, closing statement. And obviously you would think that that's where you will sign it. You don't sign anything that you send to anyone. Your ID is your signature, right? So you don't have to sign it. I typically would just type my name. Like literally I tell people to just type your name instead of trying to sign it. Let me go ahead and put it on here just so y'all see that too, your name your name type. Okay. Don't sign nothing. Don't give them your signature. Okay. Just send a copy of your ID. And that is, that is, that is, that is verification. All right. So this letter is the first round. It goes to the credit bureaus. It says recently, I looked at a copy of my credit report and noticed several inaccurate accounts. I feel that these accounts are adversely affecting my credit report and costing me thousands of dollars in interest every year. It is my understanding that you will investigate these items for me to ensure accuracy. So that's pretty much the whole entire letter. As you can see, that letter was super simple. It was short. It wasn't mean. It was just, hey, I seen my credit report. I got a few accounts that it, it looked a little weird to me. I'm not saying nothing wrong, but can you go ahead and launch an investigation? Um, the reason why I came in like this is because it goes back to the consumer laws. The FDCPA states that every consumer has the right to dispute any account on their credit report regardless of anything you are able to ask for an investigation that is your right right so they cannot refuse you just saying hey can you investigate this account you didn't give them a reason or not all they have to do from this letter is investigate the account they're supposed to launch a full investigation to make sure that every single thing on the account is correct because they i want to say this even if it is your account even i don't care yet if it's your account you still need to dispute it. You need to. You still need to force the creditor to ve uh, verify the account because just because it's yours does not mean that it's going to be verified. Just because the account is yours doesn't mean that it can be verified. You will be surprised at how many collection agencies can't even simply verify your address, your middle name, or whatever the case is. You will be surprised. So don't think, oh, I know this account is mine, so should I be challenging it? Well, if the account wasn't yours, you wouldn't, you shouldn't even be challenging it this way anyway, because that would be considered identity theft. That's a whole nother dispute process. If the account is yours, this these this is how you dispute it legally, right? You're just asking for an investigation. That's your legal right. That is your legal right. So this letter is super simple. Include a copy of your ID and do not sign this letter. Um, it's on YouTube, guys. Rose is 750 on YouTube. Can somebody type it in the uh, question box on TikTok, the YouTube name, so I can put it on the screen? Oh, well, it's, it's right there. Okay, so yeah, so this is the round one letter. You just And by the way, guys, you don't have to send it certified. So you can drop it right. You can put a stamp on it, drop it right in the mail. Have this letter a copy of your ID and send it to all three credit bureaus. If you don't have the addresses to the credit bureaus, I will pull them up at the end. Just remind me if I forget, cause y'all, y'all know I'm one track minded. So if I forget, I'll pull it up. Um, as a matter of fact, why I remember it, cause I definitely will forget. I'm just going to put it on the screen real quick. Just so we can, why, why not go ahead and take care of it? You know? All right. Shit. I should have started with the personal information letter. Remind me to, to, to touch on that too. Shit, I really should have started with the debt validator. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll get it to it. Hold on. Let me go to the addresses. And this is, the, this is a glimpse inside the DIY kit, by the way, guys. Uh, if you want the DIY kit, for you guys, it'll be on sale 50% off. So it'll be $10 um, for 24 hours with the code live. It ain't live yet, though. It'll be live when we're done. Shit, I mean, snaps. What, what happened? All right, let me go back to all right. So these are the addresses to the credit bureaus, guys. So this this is where you send your letters to. Um, and I'll read it out loud for the people who are on Instagram and TikTok. So Equifax address is P.O. Box 740256, Atlanta, Georgia, 30374-0256. That's for Equifax. Experian address is P.O. Box 4500, Allen. Excuse me. P.O. Box 4500, Allen, Texas, 75013. Y'all yeah, just realized I'm burping all in this mic like this mic ain't right in front of me. Um, Experian address is P.O. Box 2000, Chester, P.A. 19016. Y'all got that? Because I'm going to go back to the letter. Let me get a few of these super chats. Yeah, if I miss them, I'm going to feel hella bad. So please remind me. If I miss it, I promise you I ain't trying to. I'm so into the presentation that I don't, I don't even be seeing them. I appreciate them, though, for shit show. Let me um 
answer them. On your DIY kit for Bureau of Investigation, it wants us to show items to verify as accurate. Should I not put down what I think is inaccurate? Correct. Don't add nothing to any other letters except the collection agency name and the account number. You should not be giving them any additional information, especially in round one. No. Mm -mm. Don't add nothing to it. And thank you, by the way, Tiana. Uh, make sure I'm not missing it. Make sure I'm I don't feel deserving. Yeah, yeah. Why y'all why y'all donating this? We we normally don't do all this. Y'all got me feeling uncomfortable. Thank you, though. I really appreciate it. Look, like the video. I really appreciate when you guys like the video. Do not ever feel inclined to donate anything. Seriously, I'm doing this because I wanted to. Yeah, making me feel, I don't know. Collection on credit being reported every month plus comment. Consumer denies ownership. What's the best course of action? Collection on credit, re credit being reported every month plus comment. Collection on credit being reported every month. Are you talking about um the consumer statement? Is it under there? That just means that you disputed it before. Oh, no, it says consumer denies ownership. Did you dispute it online? That typically happens when you dispute something online or or reported something fraud. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Well, I'll hit on that. Um, thank you, by the way. And then I love Lucy and Golden Girl. So she said, my driver's license has a signature. What would I do? How long should I wait to dispute again if I've been marked frivolous? Okay. All right. So your driver's license has a signature. Correct. So driver's license has a signature, which is uh, which is why you should not sign the letters. Your driver's license is your signature. They can't photocopy that. With how IDs are made, they can't just photocopy it, which is why I say your address is your signature. Because by the way, the reason why I recommend that you guys don't sign any letters in the past, what has happened was I'm not claiming any company is doing this now for legality reasons. I'm not saying any company is doing this now, but in the past, it has happened where you consumers will sign their name and the collection agency photocopy their signature onto a contract because obviously it's a white piece of paper. When you sign your name, it's very easy to photocopy. I ain't even very tech savvy and I can do the shit myself. So it's easy, which is why you should you never want to send your signature because remember, if they give you a contract or anything bearing your signature, that is considered validation. So don't give them your signature. Your ID is your signature. OK, OK. Um, also, your ID is not sent to the collection agency. That's why I said you only send it to the credit bureau. So they have in their system, but you don't have to send your ID to the collection agency. OK, I hope that I hope that answered your question. And thank you. Um, Philly said, do you list charge off accounts on investigation letter as well? So, no, charge. Off, I, I challenge collections and charge off separately. So this live, we're we only going to keep it with collections. Um, if you guys want me at the end, I'll ask you guys if you want me to do a live next about charge off. That's a whole different ball game. It's different. So I don't, I don't like to mix the two because they're equally just important and they're different. OK. All right. One more and then we can get on with the show. Um, my closed accounts haven't passed through balance as well as a credit limit. How do I handle this? So that we'll touch on that when I talk about factual disputing. OK. Yeah. So if any of that, those things that we listed earlier was wrong, we'll talk about that when we get to factual disputing. By the way, while we're on this screen. Um, you guys, this is the website that you all can get your credit report from. You are entitled to at least one free copy a year of your credit report for free at annualcreditreport.com. Everyone is. Um, and actually right now until I want to say April, they're giving it to you every week. So even if you've gotten a credit report in the past 12 months, you're able to go back and get another copy if you want to, if you lost it or whatever it is. Annualcreditreport.com is the only verified source to get your actual credit report like your real credit report. And your, your real credit report is not going to have your credit scores, by the way. Your, your your credit scores is not on your credit report. All right, it's blurry. Okay, hold on, y'all. All right, so back to the letters because I didn't lost where we was at. Let me look at the slide again. Wait. Okay, Bureau of Investigation. Yeah, I forgot what part. We, what letter was I showing y'all? I sh oh, the Bureau, the Bureau of Investigation follow-up letter, because I just showed you guys the Bureau of Investigation. So let's look for the follow-up. You hear my dog or kids in the background? I, I do apologize. No, I don't. It's real life. Bureau of Investigation. Um, Investigation. My bad, y'all. I get slow sometimes. Why it ain't coming up? Is it not searching on this page? What? Oh my god. Why my uh command F ain't working? Okay, now it's working. Uh 
we're going to talk about personal information because I, I absolutely just feel like the information is complete and we have to talk about that. But just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. All right. Here it goes right here. All right. So this. So I'm going to show you all round one again. So, again, this is round one letter. So this is the letter that you kick off any dispute process with. Damn, we already hour 30 minutes in. I hope y'all ain't got tired of me yet. I hope y'all still vibing. Y'all learning. Uh, if you are, drop drop a fire emoji if you're learning something. Just or some, just drop some sort of emoji. If you are learning something, if you cool, it's been over an hour, you still you still good. We I still got you. Or is it too much? We can break it down and then I can start pick up where I left off tomorrow. If this too much. If you want me to keep going, just put a fire emoji. All right. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Cool. All right. We're just going to keep it going. We're going to keep it pushing. All right. So this is part. I mean, this is a bureau investigation letter. So that's round one. So all of your collections. Oh, I meant to say how you fill out this letter. So you would just put your collections right here. You can put all of your collection. What? You can put all of your collections on this letter. Uh, yeah. Um, there is not a, well, there's, there are rules. Um, so what happens is if you have, more, I wouldn't put more than whatever, whatever can fit on one page. So if it comes to the point where you have 12 collection accounts and it, it goes to the next page, then I would save that for another letter. So you can fit as many as you can on one page. And then if it goes to the second page, you have to put, print out a whole another letter for those. So if you got six collection accounts, Fill them in. You will put the collection agency name dash the account number, the partial account number. If there's trolls in the comments, guy, I should have put a, can I put a moderator on uh, YouTube? If there's trolls in the comments, just ignore them, y'all. We ain't got, we ain't got time. We, ain't, we really don't have time. Just let them. Um, so yeah, so this is part, I mean, this is the Bureau of Investigation letter. So, so this, this is the DIY kit and I want to, this is what comes before the Bureau of Investigation letter. So it says, and by the way, with the DIY kit, before every single letter, I have a page like this that will tell you who to send the following letter to and like what is the purpose of you sending that letter? Because I want you to know why you're sending the letter so you're not like completely in the dark with your dispute process. Um, so as you can see, for part one, Bureau of Investigation letter round one, it says send to all three credit bureaus. So Equifax, TransUnion and Experian. The purpose of sending this letter, it says send this to the credit bureaus as your initial disp dispute to place the item into investigation. This is a round one letter. Do not expect deletions. This is to initiate the process. If this letter results in a deletion, great, but don't expect it. So this letter is not... Oh, the screen. <laughs> I just talked for five minutes and y'all wasn't even freaking looking at the screen. Uh, y'all don't see it, seriously? Oh my God, drove as hell. <laughs> All right, hold on, y'all. I'm pulling it up. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know y'all was not looking at the screen. Okay, can y'all see it now? God damn. I don't do I, let me stop. Child, at this point, y'all heard what I said, right? Y'all, yeah, y'all don't gotta tell me if somebody trolling it. No, oh, just let them. Cause I, I don't even know. I, I can't block them. I don't know how to block them from her. Yeah. So um this what I was saying was before every letter in the DIY kit, there is a page like this that will tell you who to send it to and why you're sending it. And this is important to, to read because I want you to have great expectations. Like I don't want you to like think something or expect something that is not going to happen. Like, no, don't expect deletions with round one because that's not really what this letter will do. Now, if you do get a deletion, great. A lot of times people do get deletions, but again, just don't expect it. Don't feel like if you don't get it deleted that you're doing something wrong and, oh my God, I must be doing something wrong, so I'm not going to follow up. Hell no, we're not doing that. You have to keep going. When you are disputing collections or anything on your credit report, it, it almost will never just leave in a round or two. Most of, the, most of my deletions always came in rounds four through six, so I want you to keep that in mind. So um, there is no limit to the amount of derogatory accounts you can put on this letter. You may request investigation as many times as you like. So just keep that in your mind. So again, here's that letter one more time. This is round one. This is in our DIY kit, which is $10 for you guys with code live, but not, not yet because I ain't do it yet. So I'm gonna do it after, okay? So use code live and you're able to get it for uh, $10, $9.99. If you want it, if not, screenshot it and retype it over. When you buy it, you're able to download and plug and play, like literally download it and literally just fill in your information right then and there. So if you want the convenience, you can pay for the um, you can pay for the DIY kit 
But if you want to just type it yourself, it's free. All right. So that's that's round one. So then round two, let's say you challenge two collections on round one and then you receive correspondence from the credit bureaus that said that they have verified the account or they said everything other than it was deleted because you want to follow up on every single dispute other than a deletion. OK, always follow up. Go back up, please. All right, I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds to screenshot this and then we're gonna move on to the second one because I, I, it was up. If you're on um, TikTok and Instagram, you you can come over to the YouTube channel, which is Road to 750, where you're able to see the screen and see the, the screen and see the letters that I am talking about. You're able to screenshot it so you can begin to use it immediately. So come and join us over on YouTube for the full webinar experience. Um, and also, if you are if you're finding value, go ahead and like the video. I'm gonna keep saying it. Sorry for being annoying, but it does help. It really do help. So like the video if you um, are learning anything. All right. So here is part two. So send this to the credit bureaus after your initial dispute to use as a follow up of your initial dispute. So this next letter that I'm going to show you is a follow up letter. So a follow up needs to be sent within within 15 business days of you receiving their response. Let me repeat that. Y'all be messing up when y'all wait too long to respond. When you get the letter from them telling you that the account was verified within 15 business days, I need you to have round two in the mail. Because in fact, I always tell people when you are filling out these letters, go ahead and fill out rounds one and two because they're identical. You put you, you're challenging the same accounts. The only exception is if an account does get deleted, then you obviously wouldn't need to follow up on that account. But Make sure you are following up within 15 business days because you go outside of that, then you just make it harder for yourself. Oh, shit. My phone's going to die. Let me put my charger up. Let me charge it. Let me charge Hold on, y'all. All right. Make sure it's my iPad. Nope. Oh, shit. All right. Hold on, y'all. Let me be I'm gonna put, let me plug my iPad up because I don't want nothing to go there. I can find a charger. Oh, There's too many wires on this desk. All right, let me plug y'all up. <clears throat> All right, we is back. Lucky never left. <clears throat> I gotta keep clearing my throat. <clears throat> All right, I should have had some tea. All right, so this is a follow up letter. Rule number rule number one to to the round two letter. All of these accounts that you put on here. It should be the same on your second letter with the exception of if an account was deleted. So what I mean by that is here's the round two letter. I'm gonna have to make this smaller so you can uh, see the full. I'll make it a little smaller y'all because it's cut off. It might get too small. Is that too small? And that's too big. Oh, you know what? I know what I can do. I can just make the words a tad bit smaller so it can fit on the screen. All right. That's cool. Can y'all see that? Is that clear? You should have added your watermark. You should have added your watermark to these photos. It's a group on Facebook that's streaming this live and taking all your letters. <laughs> Child, the way I didn't even think of that. People. Lord, people ain't got no. Okay. Thank, thank you for telling me that, by the way. Anyways, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so this is round two. So this is the follow up letter. So this letter is still short, but you will kind of see me start to get a little aggravated, right? So it says, hey, I'm in disagreement with the items listed below, which still appear on my credit report, even after your investigation. Because remind you, this is, this is after them telling you that they're not going to delete it. I would like these items immediately reinvestigated because these inaccuracies are highly injurious to my credit rating. Further, and then you list the collection accounts, and then it says, furthermore, in according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, please provide the names and the addresses of each individual with whom you verified the above so that I may follow up. Please forward me an updated credit report after you have completed your investigation and corrections, right? So this letter is saying, thank you for doing the investigation. Thank you. Um, but I do disagree with your, with your, with your solution. I mean, I, I disagree with, with the conclusion of the investigation and because I disagree with it, 
And because I am aware of my consumer rights, your consumer rights states that, number one, you have the ability to challenge anything on your credit report and request an investigation. But then also it also says that if you disagree with the results of an investigation, you as a consumer have the right to request further investigation and or more information that will um, support the conclusion of their investigation. Right. So knowing that this letter is saying that, but in a way that I'm not saying so saying it's so direct it's just saying hey you know thank you for investigating because we're still not mad yet this is just round two thank you for for investigating that but i disagree so i am going to go ahead and request that you reinvestigate this account one thing you're going to notice is even still we are on round two and i still have yet to tell them what i think is wrong with the account we on round two and they still don't know what i want them to investigate they just know that i want them to you know investigate the entire account that's very important because even still i haven't given them a dispute reason that's important don't give up all your don't uh don't empty the clip you too it's too early in a battle and you emptied your clip and now what the ops didn't empty their clip yet and now, now now you now you land on the ground okay don't empty your clip too early i still ain't told them what i think is wrong with it i just said can you investigate this again cuz again they can't deny they can't deny me my rights. I haven't did anything up until this point, but ask them to investigate it. That's how you play. That's how you play the credit bureaus in their own game. I know my rights, but I don't got to let you know every single letter that I know my rights. But every single thing that I'm saying, understand that it's in line with my rights in case we have to take this thing further to the court, to the to the attorney general, to the CFPB. I'm able to prove that I did every single thing that I was supposed to do. So this is a follow up rule to this letter is this should, this list right here should match what you put on the round one. Right. It should match what you put on the first letter. This is not the letter to let's say because a lot of people make this mistake, too. They'll start to dispute collection accounts. Let's say they started with four collection accounts while they in the time of when they sent the first round letter and the second round letter, they may have gotten another collection that landed on their credit report. This round two letter is not the letter to put a add a new collection that you didn't previously dispute in round one because you want to under you got to understand that this letter should is a continuation. This letter is a continuation from the first letter. So if you present any other information with this letter, guess what the credit bureaus are going to do? They are going to start this process over. Th that means that that's an in that's a new investigation. That's a new investigation. One of the first letters that the credit bureaus will probably send you is their dispute process, uh, like the what they are going to do. And one of the things that they're going to tell you is, unless you present us with new information, then we'll continue the investigation. But if you don't present us with any new information, it's the same investigation, right? So you never want to present them with any new information if you don't want them to have to restart your process over. Remember, your goal, and this sounds weird to a lot of people, your goal is to get further and further in the dispute process. Because the higher the rounds that you're in that you've successfully disputed with them and they, they've not marked you frivolous and it's literally still being investigated, then the, the higher your chances of getting that account deleted is. Right. So honestly, my goal would be to get to the highest round that I can get to, because when they start marking me frivolous, then that means that it, I'm not really going. I'm not really progressing. I'm staying in the same spot. But if you're able to progressively get them to keep doing these investigations and they're not providing you with any substantial evidence to prove that the account is verified, that is where the deletions come. Like that's, that's money. Like that's, that's the pot of gold. Like seriously. So make sure you are not doing the little things on your part that would jeopardize that. Don't put no new collection on this round two letter. A new collection that has to start on round one. As small as that little detail is because your that one account wasn't on round one, they're going to start you all over. So you be thinking that you're on round three. Meanwhile, you still on round one and you wondering why you're getting stalled. You wondering why the credit bureaus are not responding. You wondering why they're constantly saying that it's verified and they're refusing to investigate this account because you haven't said anything, right? That's typically one of the reasons why you've presented them with some sort of information in round two that they didn't have in round one. Therefore, it's not continued. It's, the, it's a new investigation process. So I don't care if you sent them a round four letter if you made that one mistake, you really still on round one. So you really you it's almost like you're hustling backwards. So the details matter. And one of those details is not adding any additional information around two that you did not have on round one, with the exception of if the account was deleted. If the account was deleted in round one, then obviously it would not go on here. You should never follow up on a deleted item. Never. It's not on your credit report anymore. It does not exist in the dispute process. OK, does that make sense to everybody? If that makes sense. Um, give me a another fire energy just because I like how they look in the chat. <laughs> you do not have to send these letters certified. Oh, I'm sorry, it is cut off. Here's the full letter. 
And let me write this. Let me write what this is at the top. So in y'all screenshots, y'all can know exactly which letter this is. Hold on. Bureau reinvestigation follow up round two. Send to credit bureaus. All right, my bad. Yeah, I just had to add that because I know you know how sometimes we be screenshotting stuff and we go back and look at it and be like, wait, I don't even remember what she said this was and da da. So we're gonna just prevent that and just nip that in the bud. Okay. I hope that's better. All right. All right, so that's round two. <clears throat> so let's say as a result of your round two letter, it still came back verified. This is where people start getting frustrated. Like I really find um, that most people will quit after round two. Like most people, they'll be like, I, I sent round one and okay, that didn't get deleted. Uh, let me go ahead and send a follow up. You, typically after this round, if it's not successful, more than half of, of people are going to drop out the race. They're going to feel like they did something wrong. They're going to get so frustrated that it's like, this is so pointless. Like it's not helping me or it's working for everybody and it's not working for me. Most people stop here. Most people stop here. The promo code is live, but it ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't live yet until after because I ain't set it up. All right. Most people going to stop here, which is why y'all not getting y'all accounts deleted because y'all don't want to be persistent. Persistence is key when you hire a company to repair your credit. The only difference of them between you is they're going to be persistent. They, they know the value of following up. They know the value of presenting um, or wording things differently and challenging other laws in order to continue their dispute process. I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the recipe. You got to cook it, though. I, I gave you the recipe and the ingredients, but you got to put it in a pot. I can't put it in a pot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, round three, if, round three, if, if remember when I was the dispute process for unpaid collections, round three is where we get into the factual disputes. Everybody give me a hand clap for factual disputes because that's going to be probably the bread bone, the backbone of your dispute process. It's probably going to be the one round that's going to probably result in the most deletions statistically. So factual disputes. What is factual disputes? Let me just break it down real clear just so you know, because a lot of people really overcomplicate factual disputes. It's not hard. It's actually the easiest round. Factual disputes just means that you can factually prove that something the credit bureaus are claiming or something that the original creditor is claiming is incorrect. That's all factual disputes mean. It literally means that you are able to prove that they are wrong. That is a factual dispute. An example would be, let's say TransUnion is reporting a balance of 100 on a collection account, and then Equifax has that same account, and they're reporting a balance of 200. That is considered a factual dispute because you can factually say, look, TransUnion has this balance, Equifax has this balance. You can factually prove that it's wrong. You can send a screenshot and prove it. That, that's all a factual dispute is. It comes in many forms. But if you, it, that's all it boils down to. If you can prove it, it is considered a factual dispute. Because the only difference between a factual dispute and regular disputes, remember in rounds one through two, we never specify what was wrong. Therefore, that, that cannot be considered a factual dispute. The only time that it can be considered a factual dispute is if we specify what is wrong. When you dispute online, they start you off in a factual dispute process. Again, which is what we didn't want. Because we on round three. And the account has still not gotten deleted. So now at this point, you have given the credit bureaus two times to make good on their word. You give, you've given them two times to make sure that your consumer rights are not in violation. They claimed to investigate the account two times at this point fully, right? Because you ain't getting them a, a dispute reason. You're, you are owed a full investigation. So now at this point, now you can start saying, okay, I know that you are claiming that you are disputing this account. I mean, I'm sorry. I know that you're claiming that you investigated this account, but that couldn't be true because how did you miss this? How did you miss that? So apparently somebody ain't looking good enough. So now I have grounds to um, I have grounds to dismiss your entire dispute process, your entire investigation. If I can say you missed this, what else did you miss? Now you're going to have to start proving some some stuff. Right. Yeah. You, you with me? That makes sense. So it's all about putting the credit bureaus in a position where you're able to make a chess move and factual disputes is just a chess move. So I say all that to say when it comes to round three, let's say you got your uh, results back from round one, round two, both of them were verified. The collections are still on your credit report and you like, what the hell do I do now? So now you're going to have to investigate. Remember when I keep telling y'all, get your original credit reports, get your original credit reports. I'm going to repeat it again. You need your original credit reports, especially when you get to rounds three. Credit Karma not going to give you enough information to probably be able to, to have a, a good factual dispute. 
Credit karma, re, um, credit karma screenshots are not accepted in credit bureau disputes. They don't care what credit karma is reporting. Credit karma is your Vantage score. And also mo most credit monitoring apps use your Vantage score. So the credit bureaus don't care about that because the credit bureaus go off your FICO scores. So they can't be considered a factual dispute. You need your real credit report. It has more information. More information means that there are more opportunities for you to dispute, right? What are different things that you should look for on every account? I need you guys to screenshot this list because these are different things that when you are looking at your credit report and you're in rounds three and you're like, dang, I don't know what else to challenge. You got to look at every single credit account, collection account, and you have to look, look at every line to see, ask yourself all of these questions. Does this account include any outdated information? Outdated information means that if you pay, let's say you pay the collection, but they're still reporting it as unpaid. And it's been past 60 days, right? That means that that information is considered outdated. Uh, let's say an account was closed, but they're still reporting it open. Let's say you, different things. Let's say you paid your utilization down. It's time has passed and it's not updated. That's outdated information. Another thing that you need to look for is incorrect account number. So yes, they only give you your partial account number. So it kind of gets a little confusing to know what is correct when it comes to account numbers. Um, but if you if you ever have questions, you you are able to call the collection agency or the original creditor to have them verify the full number. It can be one that you can use. I'm gonna be honest; that particular one is kind of like a low hanging fruit one. I don't. That's not my go to. It's kind of like one of the ones where I'm desperate if nothing else applies. That that's what I'll look at. I don't really like that one, but it is an option. Look at any accounts that has been reaged. Reaged means that. The date of last activity was updated and there was no change in the status, the account status. That happens a lot with collection agencies where they will report that you paid a dollar or report um, that you paid 50 cent or something like that. If you ever get a random alert from one of your credit monitoring apps that says that, good job, you made a, we see that we see that the balance on your collection has, has went down. Credit karma specifically, because they love this notification. A lot of people would think, oh, that's good, right? Because credit karma makes it seem like good job, right? Understand that what is happening behind the scenes is the collection agency is illegally manipulating your dollar date, your date of last activity. Your date of last activity is very important to every credit report because it will determine how long you can be sued for that account. Right. So the statute of limitations is how long you can be sued, how, how if you are within the statute of limitations. So when you hear the term you are within your statute of limitations, that means that you are still liable and able to be sued. OK, if you are outside of your statute of limitations, they cannot sue you for this debt. Every single state has a different um, statute of limitations amount. Some some three years, some have six years, some have 12 years, some have 15 years. It just depends on what state you're in. So you would have to Google, just Google your state and Google statute of limitations for debt to find out how long it is. So if you ever see that notification, that means that the collection agency has reported that you made a payment, even if it's a dollar. Understand that that is considered a activity change. So even you have reducing the balance by a dollar is refreshing that statute of limitations. A lot of credit bureau, or I'm sorry, a lot of collection agencies will do this so that they can extend that time because th their, their um, success rate on collecting on accounts that are outside of the statute of limitations are, it's very slim. And they know that after an account has surpassed that, the chances of them getting the money is slim. So obviously they want to keep you within that statute of limitations so they can continue to threaten you. Hey, we're going to sue you and da, da 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 so that they can have a greater chance of getting your money. So Knowing that you need to understand that you need to be watching for any change just because they said your balance went down a dollar is not good. They just updated your statute of limitations. Another thing that they do is they'll call you and say, hey, uh, can you pay this? And you're like, no, nah, I can't afford it. Right. Them uh, simply saying something like, OK, well, do you mind if we call you back Friday when you get paid to discuss how much you're able to, to, to possibly pay at that point? You simply saying, yeah, you can call back Friday or yeah, or giving them permission to call you back Friday um, for the for the reason to set a payment agreement. They can report that they can report that you made a payment arrangement with them, which also still falls under you paying the account. So I always say when you start disputing, don't be talking to them on the phone. It's no reason to like all they're going to do is probably trick you into validating your own debt in their own sneaky way. They're very sneaky collection agencies. You shouldn't be talking to them over the phone because your FDCPA rights only are protected if you can, if, if it's via written communication. OK, don't talk to them over the phone. Nothing good comes from that. 
everything should be in black and white so that you can prove it or deny it, whatever. Shit. All right. So this is all the list. We ain't got to go over everyone, but just screenshot it. These are different reasons that you're able to use if you find yourself in round three to cultivate a letter. How do you use this information to formulate a factual dispute letter? There's no one letter for factual disputes because obviously, depending on what you're challenging, the wording will be different. So this is just a loose formula. Um, factual dispute letters should not be more than two to three sentences. These are going to be the shortest letters that you send to the credit bureaus because they are very short, sweet, and to the point. When you are mailing the credit bureaus, especially when you're in this round, you typically are mailing it talking to a, a computer. You're talking to the OCR system, optimal character recognition system. So they read your letter and determine what your dispute is based on how you word things. This, these are very meticulously uh, worded, all of the letters. They may seem simple, but they're worded in a way that I know the machine can will understand it, okay? So a factual dispute is, I always say, first of all, you need to identify the account. Identifying the account is just simply listing the collection agency name um, in the partial account number, exactly how it is on your credit report. So if it says 1234XXX, I need you to put 1234XXX, okay? Because you want the machine to like pick up what account you're disputing. Um, you will put, you would, you would identify the account and then you will cite the discrepancy. So literally whatever is wrong with the account. Um, and you can just choose from the list that I showed you. And then you need to give your desired outcome. So a factual dispute is three sentences or it's three things. Number one, you need to make sure every factual dispute is, is identifying the account. So put the account number, put the collection agency name. Number two, you need to cite what's wrong with the account, cite the discrepancy. Hey, this account is reporting this or did it out, whatever your reason is. And then number three, give them your desired outcome. What is the, your solution? What would you be happy about? I.e., this account should be deleted. You have to give them a call to action on what your desired outcome is. OK, so here's an example. I recently paid trans to women may concern. I recently pulled my reports and notice you are reporting the incorrect balance for this account. You would put the account name, the account number. Because the balances being reported by your company and Experian are different, this means the account has not properly been verified. Because keep in mind, I've given you two, two times to this point to investigate this account. Both times you said it was verified. Meanwhile, the account number is wrong. How, Sway? Clearly, you did not investigate the account. So that's pretty much all this letter is saying. Um, give your desired outcome. Please delete this account immediately for your failure to conduct a full investigation. That's a violation of your rights if you can prove that they didn't fully investigate your report report i mean they didn't fully investigate uh your your complaint okay include your id and proof of residency if your address on your id is not accurate is not is not up to date and send to the credit bureaus oops shit who child i've been talking too much don't forget to like the video if you are finding some sort of value um make sure you like the video all right. So another option for rounds three, if you're going, cause you're going to find, like I said, not every account is going to include a factual error. Some accounts are going to be, sorry. Some accounts are going to be reporting perfectly fine. Then you're going to find yourself in round three. You're like, damn, what can I do? I hope it's not lost. You still are able to follow up. So another uh, way that you're able to conduct a round three is to send a method of verification letter by way of using section 611 in the FCRA rights. Um, in this, oh, let me, well, okay. I'm gonna show you how the letter. I'm gonna show you the letter. The only thing I'm cutting off is the top part. Y'all don't need this part. Cause the letter is going to be too long if I try to include that. So this is, uh, also an alternative round three letter. It's all about being strategic. Exactly. Did I miss any super chats, y'all? If I did, I'm so sorry. I see one. I see one. Thank you, Marlena. So you said identity IQ good for disputes or factual checks? No. No, no. Online, not even my FICO. You need your real credit report. There's no substitution for your real credit report. Like no matter how good the site is, your real credit report will almost always include more information. Ah, right, yeah. We still kind of, we still low key in the beginning. God damn, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> I feel like we should have been at the end by now. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up the presentation again. Whew, it's hot. I should hold on. Where is it? Hold on, y'all. I don't know why I keep exiting out every time I'm done with it. Like I'm not gonna pull it right back up. Okay, here we go. 
All right. Oh. All right, here we go. If I missed your super chat, I'm so sorry. Let Y'all let me know if I miss one because I really, really don't want to miss one. I'm going to feel hella bad about it all night. I just rather not make sure I don't miss none. All right, so this is what I just showed y'all, but obviously it's, it's harder to see on here. I'm going to give y'all 10 seconds on each letter to screenshot if you want to. You probably already did. So just a refresher. Did Yeah, I'm not even freaking looking at my screen again. <laughs> so drove. Oh, my God. Okay, here we go. Okay. So again, I'm just going to give y'all 10 seconds per slide to um, screenshot, and then we're going to move on. Um, yeah, so this is round one, Bureau of Investigation letter. Here's round two, Bureau of Investigation letter. So round two letter. I missed your super chat on YouTube. Only on YouTube, because I'm not even monitoring Instagram. Go over the FCRA laws. It's that has to be a independent law. It's so many laws. We wouldn't even possibly, we'll be up all night. Yeah, I can see the screen now, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Moving along. All right. So the next type is time bar collection. So again, time bar collections are just collection accounts that are outside outside of the reporting time, the legal reporting time. So outside of the statute of limitations, there's another clock that is on every derogatory account that is called the reporting time. Unlike the statute of limitations, this is the same no matter what state you live in. So everyone's reporting time is the exact same. The reporting time for a for a collection account is seven years from the date of first delinquency. OK, so that means that they can only collect that. It can only be reported on your credit report for up to seven years after seven years. No matter what the status on that collection account is, it cannot legally be reported on your credit report. That is considered a time bar collection. OK, uh, oh, I'm sorry that this I just sorry, I just had a whole brain freeze. So time bar, I'm sorry, is ones that are that are outside of the statute of limitations. But the this is real quick because we, we ain't even going to go really much through this because time bar collections is collections that I don't recommend that you challenge. Um, not because you challenging them, you starting to open up the, the dispute process is can be a way to get them to reenter the statute of limitations. So if it's time bar, I personally would just let it sit means that it's at least a few years old. So it doesn't have the biggest impact on your score. I wouldn't challenge a time bar collection personally. I just wouldn't. So that's pretty much the conclusion for time barred. Same as collections, but don't make sure you don't pay anything, by the way. If it's time bar, you pay it. Remember that recess the statute of limitations. All right. So then we're going to move on to pay collections, a.k.a. the devil, the hardest account type to get removed. What probably a lot of y'all been waiting on how to challenge pay collections. So first of all. Legally, payment is recognized as acceptance of debt, meaning paying a collection is you verifying your own debt. That's not an exaggeration. When you pay it, you verify it, okay? So typically speaking, if you pay it, you challenge it, they typically just have to show them that you paid it and they're going to say it's verified, okay? It can be a hard battle. Um, contrary to popular belief, unless the collection was paid before it reported to your credit reports, paying it does not entitle you to a deletion. A lot of people think that when they pay their collections that the company has to delete it. No, ma'am. By law, they're only required to update the balance on the account. That's all that they have to do after you pay it. They don't delete it. Most companies don't delete it. Some companies will offer things like a pay to delete, which is them deleting the account off your credit report in exchange for payment. So you don't know what companies will and won't. So understand that if you pay it, you verified it. And um, if it's unpaid, it's considered verified, unverified. All right. So what is my dispute process for challenging a paid collection? So step one is going to be, as like I mentioned, to send the Bureau of Reinvestigation letter. I need a ponytail. Hold on. I'm getting hot. To send the Bureau of Reinvestigation letter. So the same as an unpaid collection, you still start the same process off with the Bureau of Reinvestigation letter. It's the same letter that I showed you guys at first. So I won't be pulling it back up because it's literally the same letter. Um, and then this was supposed to say step two. Oh shit, my bad. This was supposed to say step two. Step two is the not liable letter. A lot of people have been asking me for that, and we will I'll pull it up so you guys are able to screenshot it. And then step three is a factual dispute. Ignore the one one one. This is one, it's supposed to be one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. All right. Um and this is just an overview of basically everything we went over. I'm, I ain't going to go through each one because it's literally what I just said. Um, I wanted to put it in this view so you're able to screenshot it 
it's a little messed up, but just screenshot it just so you can have a quick reference on the differences. All right. All right. So quick note before we leave debt collectors, debt collectors, which are people who collect the debt, people who collect the debt. All right. So debt collectors have to, okay. This is where we talk about the debt validation letter. I, I wasn't sure if I included it, but I did. So that's good. So debt collectors, debt collectors have to give you 30 days to request validation of the collection account before they send it to the credit report, to the credit bureaus. So what that means is whenever you receive a collection notice in your mailbox, we've all seen one before, the collection notices where they're telling you, hey, we got this account, you owe this, how you want to pay it, right? That is a collection notice. What most people don't realize is whenever that hits your mailbox, the, the day that a collection uh, notice hits your mailbox, there's a timer that starts. It's a 30 day timer and that timer is called the dunning period. The dunning period is the time in which um, is before a collection account has reached the credit bureaus. So before something pops up on your credit report, the company is supposed to mail you a collection notice to tell you that you have to you have your right to request validation with, within 30 days. They have to legally give you 30 days. They cannot send it to the credit bureaus if they have not given you a 30 days to request validation. What's important to know about this is you are only given this right if you be proactive and request validation. It doesn't just come to you. You have to, like in written communication, you have to request it. If you don't request it on the 31st day, the company is in full legal right to send it to the credit bureaus. And then you're going to, it's just a whole nother battle. Now you're trying to battle an account before, I mean, you're, you're trying to battle a collection on your credit report. So obviously the best case scenario is to deal with this collection account before it reaches the credit bureau so that you can prevent it from doing any damage to your credit report. If you can cut, if you can catch a collection before it reports, then you've, successfully saved your credit score you, you that uh, that credit that collection account is going to be like it never happened if you deal with it within the dunning period so gone are the days are we going to not open our mail because we all guilty of it i i, I didn't did it too we are, we're not going to neglect to open our mail and think all oh, them just bills them bills you need to address or it's just going to pop up on your credit report anyway because if you just if you fail to not address it it's still going to end up on your credit report so address it so you can do little to no damage, hopefully, as you can. All right. So this is called the dunning period. A lot of people going to ask the, I'm, I'm going to address the questions that I always get. What if I did not receive the letter in the first place? You probably didn't receive the letter. I'm going to keep it funky because you either didn't open the letter, you didn't open the mail, or the company don't have your new address. You have to understand that when it comes to collection accounts, unless you proactively say, hey, I moved, they can legally go off the address that you had, the service address of the account. So if it's a utility bill, and you move from that place and you move to a new place, but you never updated the collection agency on your address, then all they have to do is send it to your old address because you're supposed to have a you supposed to set up mail forwarding anyway. So you have to understand that the credit bureau looks at that as your fault. They don't sympathize you not receiving your collection notice if you have moved. It's just it, that's kind of like one of those things where that's within their rights. And no matter how annoying it is, we have to respect that. Right. So you may not have gotten it because you didn't update them and that's going to be your fault ultimately, right? But set up mail forwarding, you should have a USPS set up mail forwarding for this reason. Number two, you probably didn't even notice it. A lot, a lot we, we, we be tossing them letters a lot of the time, but whatever it is, if it is on your credit report um, already, then you have to deal with it like what I just told you about the unpaid collections. It, it's on there now. This letter that I'm going to show that I'm going to show you is specifically for collections that hasn't touched your credit report yet. You can't ask a, a, a credit bureau for validation because credit bureaus does not validate accounts. They verify, which is why every time you challenge something with the credit bureaus, the language that they use is this account was verified. It's not their account. Therefore, they cannot validate a thing. All they can do is verify that the information that's presented was accurate. You get the difference? It's not their account. So we never send a debt validation letter to the credit bureaus. Treasury and Equifax and Experian going to look at you like, girl, this is not our account. What They're going to ignore you. What, what are you sending us this for? We are not liable to validate a thing. It's not our account. All we have to do is verify. And language is important. Language is important. So the validation letter goes directly to the collection agency, okay? Um. <clears throat> Throat getting hella dry. Okay, and this is just a screenshot of the actual laws. You can you can look up the FDCPA laws, but it's if you ever need to reference it, if you are a, a victim of not of them you sending a debt validation letter and they didn't respond, you can use this as a screenshot to send with one of your letters to prove that that you you were wronged. 
So section 809, subsection B is called disputed debts. <clears throat> what I wanted to bring attention to is a few things, actually. A is within five days after initial communication with the consumer in connection with the collection of any debt, a debt collector shall, unless the following information is contained in the initial communication or the consumer has paid the debt. Or the consumer has paid the debt because after you paid it, they don't have to provide you with validation. That's number one. This is a screenshot directly out of the FDCPA laws. You can look it up now. Number two, oops. number two, um, it says a statement that unless the consumer within 30 days after receipt of the collection notice disputes the validity of the debt or any portion, the debt will be assumed valid by the debt collector. I'm going to read that again. If I'm going to read it in my language. If your ass don't follow up with the debt, I mean, if you don't send a debt validation letter, they can they can legally assume it's valid. OK, so if you fail to not send it, that is not anyone's fault but you. Uh, oh, what if it's after 30 days? I'm sorry. The laws doesn't change just because you you were unaware of them. There's a saying it's ignorance of the law is no excuse. The same goes with the credit bureaus. Just because you were not aware, no matter what the circumstances was, they don't care. They, the credit bureaus don't care, guys. We are not people to them. We're numbers. We're black and white. We're credit reports. So don't expect sympathy. Hey, oh, I was in a hot. I'm sorry. I know it sounds horrible, but they don't care. Whatever the reason is, you, all they all they legally got to do is give you 30 days. That's all they have to do. The, the, the situation doesn't matter, guys. So don't try to sympathize that you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Stick with the facts. OK, so if you already passed 30 days, guess what? This this ain't the the. the this particular letter is not the dispute process for you. Now you just have to go and dispute the collection like what we just went over, send a bureau of investigation letter and all of that. The letter that I'm about to show you is strictly for collections that is not on your credit report yet. <clears throat> also, here's another screenshot. Oh, well, I had already, I already addressed this, but this is, yeah, a question that I always get a lot. What if the debt collector never sent me a written notice? Um, you can still assert and dispute your verification rights. The 30 day time limit will not apply, though. So you can say validate this debt. But if they are an a-hole company, they're going to be like, uh, no, you you are. We didn't have to do that because you didn't do it during the dining period. But I will say that, especially right now, because mail is so backed up being that COVID and all of that. A lot of times collection agencies does still accept validation requests after 30 days. How long after will depend. So like if you're a few days, you know, after maybe a week or two, you know, they'll probably still accept it because then you can kind of make the argument of, you know, it, it was delayed or something like that. Right. But if it's like if it's months down the line, and it's already important. It, sorry, you waited too late. It, you waited too late. So here's the debt validation letter. And as always, let me pull it up so you can see it clearer. Right here. Let me see if there was any super chats. Hold on. All right. So here is the debt validation letter. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. If you guys are learning something, hit the like button, hit the follow button on every platform. Here are all my social media accounts. Road to 750 plus is the credit and finance page. Shauna Martin is just my personal page. I, I don't talk about credit on there. <laughs> and then the YouTube page is Road to 750. I also have TikTok, which is Shonda Martin underscore. Um, I give credit advice and financial advice on all of those different platforms free every day. I try to. So, yeah, let me put a letter up. Lip drop. Mouth dry child. We just we just struggling. Oh, why didn't it come up? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I know y'all like girl. Where is it? I told y'all I wasn't playing. I told y'all we was gonna learn something. We ain't just doing surface level information. No, this is advice that you can take to the bank and cash it. What did he say? Uh <laughs> take it to the bank and cash it. Period. I'm on the same energy. This is stuff that you can implement immediately. Ain't no bubblegum information. Wait, why didn't it come up? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me pull it up, y'all. All right. So this is the debt validation letter. Are... <laughs> they said, I ain't always going to do a whole college course. I done learned more, more in these two hours than I done learned in my whole life. <laughs> oh, let me make it smaller so y'all can see it. Um, all right, yeah, this is the debt validation letter. 
You don't include your ID with this letter because what is the rule? This is going to the collection agency and we don't send them anything. Um, this is in Cormix. Mm, hold on, y'all. I ain't got none. Okay. Um, oh, y'all can't see. It ain't on screen. Hold up. Yeah, it is. Oh, the thing is in a way. Let me, oh, no, it ain't. Y'all good. Y'all good. This is a debt validation letter. So this, this gets sent directly to the uh, collection agency. Let me add it so y'all know what it is when y'all screenshot it. All right, hold on, y'all. I'm uh, sent to a collection agency. Yeah. Oh, you can send it certified. This is the only letter that this is one of the only letters that I say send certified only because if you get to the point where you have to prove that you sent it in time, um, that's the way that you can. So this is probably the only letter that I'm gonna say send certified. All right, all right, all right. Hold on, let me make that bigger and I'm gonna turn it red so y'all know that this is not a part of the letter. This is just for your information only. If you are on Instagram or on TikTok, make sure you come over to the YouTube channel because y'all can see everything that I'm talking about. You can see the letters, you can screenshot it, all of that. Um, I'm pretty much just streaming just audio. I mean, you know, come over to YouTube. YouTube is roll to 750 come over so you can see it so this is the day validation letter this is what you send to the collection agency directly before an item has reached the credit bureaus so as soon as you get the collection notice in your mailbox you immediately go and say oh shit i have to send a day validation letter immediately because if i hold this off and allow time to pass all it's going to do is pop up on my credit report that is your warning when you get the collection notice that is a warning you ignoring it is not going to stop it all you ignoring it is going to do is ensure that it's going to just pop up in about 60 days 30 to 60 days and your credit score will decrease you have to be proactive send a debt validation letter and why it's so important is because again many collection agencies are not going to be able to validate the debt they are a third-party entity with very limited information so when it when they are challenged, a lot of times they can't validate the debt, which is why they will say, hey, I'm going to cease collections or um, we're going to sell this to another collection agency. They A lot of co collection agencies don't want to want no smoke. So when you insert your rights, they know that you're not the one. You're not one of them. They're not going to play with you. OK, they're not going to play with you because you're a credit cousin. And that's just period anyway. But in order to tell them that you're a credit cousin, you gotta you gotta be on their ass and send it. Okay, so this is uh, a debt validation letter. Send it to the collection agency. Send it certified. Worth worth it to send it. The bottom half is missing. Mm, all right, all right, all right. Let me. I'm gonna make it smaller. Is that better? Y'all can see the whole thing. Is that better? This, this is not for charge off. This is only for collections. Only for collections. Don't apply. None of the like, information that I told you that don't apply to the charge offs because it's a different process. Remember, this live is specifically about collection. Oh, yep. All right. Um, Include that in your letter. Include what? <clears throat> All right. So then... Let's say they either don't respond to your debt validation request, like you don't receive anything in the mail from them, or they went behind your back and sent this to the collection agency anyway. After ignoring your request, there is an option for a follow-up um, that you will send after 40, at least 45 business days has passed since you sent the first letter. And this is just telling them like, hey, yo, uh-uh, you're not going to do this. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to ignore me. I want to let you know that I'm aware of my rights. I'm not one of them. Please don't try me because I'm willing to take it there. That's what this letter says was just like in a more professional way. This letter is longer, so I do have to make it a, a bit smaller. And I hope you guys can still. Can y'all still see that? Can y'all still see that? Oh, my God. I need some karma. I'm so sick of this lip gloss. Sticky lip gloss. Um. 
Oh, hold on. I'm missing Super Chats. Let me, let me. It's blurry. You got to uh change the quality on your phone. You got to push the three dots and push a uh, higher picture quality. Thank you, Kimberly. Kimberly said, I ain't going to put it on the screen, so I won't block you. Kimberly said, how can I determine if a collection agency has re-aged my account? Um, So that's hard to prove if you don't have older credit reports that shows the dates that they were reporting. Um, the reason why I said that is because whenever you request a new credit report, they don't show you what what was it, it like what it was reporting at first. So you have to be able to prove it, which is why every single credit report that you guys request, because you can request it every week now, make sure you take a picture of that and email it to yourself just so you can have it for your reference, because they're not going to retroactively give you information. Um. Yeah, on YouTube. All right, so this is the follow up, y'all. Oh my god. All right, I feel like I had a piece of hair. All right, y'all. Let me pull back up the slideshow. All right, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to hurry up and get y'all out of here. We we've been here too damn long. Um, I need to be a one button hit. Like it's, I be having to do too much going back and forth on these screens. All right, let me pull back up the slash show the slash show. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay. Yeah, every every letter that I'm showing is in a DIY kit, which again is going to be ten dollars for you guys using the code live. I'm gonna do it after this video. All right. All right. So after a collection reaches the credit bureaus, because again, the debt validation is before it reaches the credit bureau. So if you're in a position where you have collections that is already on your credit report, these are things that you should pay attention to. The date closed. Make sure that it's consistent across the board. Excuse me. Make sure TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian is reporting the same month and year that the account was closed, if it is closed. Make sure that they are reporting the same balance. If TransUnion is saying that you owe $12 for this collection account, and then Equifax is saying that you owe $13 for the same collection account, even though it's only off a dollar, it is considered factually incorrect, right? So no matter how small or big the differences is, if there is a difference, you need to challenge it. Because if this information is being taken from the, the same creditor, from the same source, how exactly is it being reported differently? No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. So they have to be consistent, right? Um, also, I wanted to note, not every collection account or every account on your credit report has to report to all three credit bureaus. The law does not require them to report to all three. What the law does require them to do is if they are reporting to more than one, then the information has to be consistent and accurate because if it's inconsistent, then it couldn't be considered accurate. You know, so if you see have there is it's not a um, it's not an unusual thing to have more collections or more accounts on one report than you have on the other. They don't have to mirror each other because companies can and will choose what collection agencies they want to report to. They have to pay per account that they report per collection agency. So the smaller the collection agency company would typically only report it to about one or two. You know, the bigger companies, they'll go ahead and, and, and report it to three, but they don't have to. That's why your credit scores are likely different because they're just different accounts, okay? Um, Collection accounts, and uh, we already went over this, but collection accounts should not include a, a payment history, a past due balance, nor a monthly payment. If it's off a couple of days, I would absolutely still send it because then if they try to deny it, I would I would argue to, hey, it didn't get de uh, delivered. The, the post office is unreliable right now. You ain't going to if they if it's only off a couple of days, I they they going to hurt my mouth. <laughs> I wouldn't let it slide. But I mean, ultimately, your rights are going to be protected for as much as you're willing to fight for it, because a lot of times you people complain to me and say, hey, Shonda, they, they they did this and they did that. And I know that's not right. So that if you know it's not right, you have to call them out on it. It ain't going to just get fixed just because it's wrong. No, you got to be your own advocate. Um, okay, so then pay to delete. I wanted to include a pay to delete letter in this slideshow because I think that it's just an important letter that you should have during your dispute process. There's going to come a, po a point in time when you are disputing your collections that, like I said, some accounts are not going to be able to get deleted. So now you have to discuss what are your options if you have been constantly challenging an account 
Not you get installed, because if you're getting installed, that just means that you're not really challenging it. They're just denying you have to start over. And the only way to kind of un start over and undo a stalled process is to wait at least 60 business days from your last dispute so that all of the disputes are closed and then you can start a new dispute. OK, so if you are if they have sent you information or sent you your signature or validated the debt, then you may have to ask for a pay to delete. A pay to delete is simply just you asking the collection agency, hey, can I pay this account? And then in exchange for my payment, you can delete it from my credit report. Not all collection agencies is going to say, yeah, because some will just say, no, we don't do that. But there are some that do offer it. I would always ask. The worst thing they can say is no. Y'all got to quit being scared to ask these companies for something. They can, the worst thing they can say is no. What that do? Hurt your feelings? You don't know them people. They don't, they don't know you. You know what I'm saying? X, 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 X. Um, because sometimes they'll say yeah to one person and then say no to the next. So I can't really even tell you for sure if they're going to accept it or not because it does always depend. Um so when, when an account is deleted as a result of a pay to delete, it's going to be as if it never happened. So when the when a lender pulls your credit report after it's deleted, they're not going to see that you had a collection two months ago. If it's off your report, it's off your report. They're not going to see it. That's another question that I, I get a lot as well. Um, so here is the pay to delete letter. God dang it. I keep forgetting this. I think it's the last letter I'm, I have to show. Let me see. Let me pull it up, though. I don't know if I'm saving it because I told you at first I wasn't going to say I don't think I, mm, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. The, let me see. If we get to a certain like amount that I will save it. And that's on YouTuber now. <laughs> Those annoying ass YouTubers. That's how they be sounding. And I'm sounding just like them. OK, hold on. Yeah, let me. I'm pulling it up. Hmm. Let me see. Okay, it's right here, it's right here, it's right here, it's right here. Hold on. Right here. Okay, so this is, what letter is this? Um, what letter is it? Oh, pay to delete. I'm like, wait, what letter is it? This is the pay to delete letter. And this this also can be used as a settlement letter as well. A settlement, the difference between a settlement and a pay to delete is a pay to delete letter means that they're going to delete the account when you pay it. Um. And a settlement is you want to ask them, can you pay a portion of what you actually owe because you, you know, maybe can't afford it or whatever the case is. So there are two different things. Just because they a company agrees to a settlement doesn't mean that they're agreeing to delete it because pay to delete and settlement are two different things. OK. Yeah, but listen to her. Her methods work. Literally, me and my mom fixed our credit entirely just using her free letters. Shout out to you and your mom. Shout out to you and your mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. How many likes do we got? I don't even know how I can see. Do it tell y'all how many likes that's on YouTube? You don't tell me. Somebody tell me how many likes to say, and then I'll tell y'all what it got to be. Damn, we've been here two hours. Okay, we almost done. I swear I'm going to let y'all go. So this is the pay to, pay to delete letter. Uh, let me put it on there so y'all know what it is. I just be thinking, uh, my biggest fear is y'all sitting here this whole time, right? And then tomorrow y'all still feeling like, oh, that's too much. I'm still not going to do it. So Shana just wasted her three hours. It's ready to have to do it. And I still ain't going to do it. Got to do it, man. Please. I can't want it more than you. Guess what? My credit is good. And that ain't even saying it's, a, it's because I took the time. I took the time. I took the time. It takes time. You want good credit? Put the time in. It ain't no excuse. Uh, 2022, I don't care about none of the excuses. Nope. I'm finna start. I'm gonna be mean when it comes to excuses because for real, like we get it together. Like, come on. We we provide you. I'm, I'm providing education. You have to apply. You have to. Um, all right, y'all. So that is the pay to delete letter. Oh, my bad. Let me move this. Pay to delete letter. Y'all got that? And then I'm gonna keep going. It's 1,000. Okay. So if we get to 1300, I'll save it. So that means 400 more of y'all have to like the video. If you're on TikTok right now, TikTok, damn, TikTok got 28,000 likes. If we get to 30,000 on TikTok. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, y'all, we almost done. So this is the pay to delete letter. Y'all got it? All right, let me pull the slideshow back up. Of course, every time I got to start from the freaking buggy, uh, start all over. Hell no, I'm not editing. I'm talking about, can you edit out the, 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 
dead noise and part. I, I'm I ain't gonna edit it. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even want you to give up your hope. I'm gonna tell you that right. It isn't. It ain't gonna be edited. If I do save it, it's gonna be raw. I'm not gonna go through all this footage. No way, Jose. It ain't gonna happen. I, I love you though, but I ain't, I can't do that for you. Ask me something else. I'm not ready to do that, but I ain't gonna edit it. Um. All right. So that's the pay to delete letter. My attention span can't watch it for two hours. You don't you don't want to fix your credit bad enough. You don't want it bad enough. You can't sit through an hour of free information to apply. You don't want it bad enough. I can't make you. That's gonna be something that I, I I don't have no tolerance for that. I ain't gonna lie. You saying you don't have your attention span can't wait two hours? Well, you, okay. You just don't want good credit. And I ain't trying to be mean, but for real, come on now. At some point, come on now. Not everything is fun in life, but if you want to get to a certain place, you got to be okay with it. It's just not being fun and just having to take care of it, man. Um, This is the settlement letter. Again, you can use what I already showed you, or you can just screenshot this. Let me make sure y'all looking at the screen. All right. Have you ever gotten a bankruptcy deleted? Oh, yeah, girl, I've gotten thousands of bankruptcies deleted. I, I need to do a lot. I said, I said the next credit boot camp is going to be bankruptcies. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, so this is, again, just another list of the factual dispute things that you can look for. Not things. Factual dispute reasons or um, things that you can check for every collection. So this is just for your screenshot purposes. Basically, all the information that we just talked about, but just in one screen. So screenshot this for your educational purposes. What's next? What else slides did I add? Lord Jesus, this is never ending. Cause what else do what else do I have to say after this? Oh, is that done? Y'all, are we done? We are done. That is, I'm like, what else do I have to say? Okay. So that concludes how to properly dispute a collection. Um, I don't know if the process seems simple or complex to you, but rest assured on and know that what I just told you. I'm not being cocky on anything that I'm finna say, but what I just told you has literally helped thousands of individuals repair their credit. Um, there are, I have so many testimonies, so many tested methods. Um, people in the comments can probably tell you some people if they've already started that when I recommend something, it's researched, it's tested, it's, uh, it's ethical, it's legal in it, in it, it aligns with the, with the consumer laws. Okay. So if a step seems, you know, if a step seems minuscule and you're like, Oh, I don't feel like waiting that time and all of that no matter how small or big it is, make sure you follow the process because you ultimately you can't get mad if something don't go your way if you didn't follow the process. And also you have to understand that not every account is going to get deleted. It just is what it is. Some accounts are going to be able to be val validated. Like I told you in the beginning, not every account is going to be deleted. You guys know I'm big on, I don't sell dreams. I don't sell dreams. So I'm not going to get on here and say, yep, send my letters and they're going to delete everything. We don't do that. No. I want, I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to expect from every round. And that, that's why I put it before every letter in the kit. If you do get the kit, because um, I don't sell dreams. It's not a, a realistic goal or something, expectation that I would even want you to have. So um, you guys, I don't even know if y'all got to the likes, but y'all showed me. Oh, it has to. Okay. I was going to say, y'all showed me so much love tonight. Like, really, I love when I, I just be feeling like I can feel y'all energy when, when y'all be doing the fire images. Y'all have been very active. That fuels me because I be tired as hell. And then I start seeing those fire images. I'm like, okay, cool. They learning something so I can keep going. Um, if you enjoy the way that I educate and you want more, uh, Credit Bootcamp is available. Credit Bootcamp is a five-day webinar where we go through every single thing from your credit reports. Day one is going to be your personal information, how to dispute that, how to find what's attached to accounts, um, the importance of disputing your personal information. It's going to be webinars like how I just showed you, but it's going to talk about personal information. It comes with five different days. Day two is about collection. So day two is pretty much going to be what I just showed you. Um, day three is going to be charge off. So if you have questions about charge offs, we have a full webinar for charge offs on the site. Day four is going to be third party entities and bankruptcies, public records, child support. So you want to know more about that? Go purchase Credit Bootcamp. Uh, Credit Bootcamp is also going to be 50 percent off on the site. Make sure you guys use code live. Um, it'll be for I'm going to do for I'm going to do until Monday. So the weekend. So it'll be for the weekend. The whole site will be 50 percent off to you guys. It'll be code live all caps. I'm going to set it up after we get off live. Um, if you want to purchase the DIY kit, the original price is $20 for you guys. It'll only be $9.99, $10. I'm telling you, 
is that the kit is worth obviously way more than ten dollars it's over 15 letters it literally gives you a step-by-step -step process on how to dispute things and it lets you download it and plug in your information and send the letters right away so if you want the diy kit which is the letters that i've showed you today plus more it'll be 9.99 for you with code live on the website which is let me put the website up the website is road to 750.net um the dia the everything will be on sale the hippo kit is only going to be four dollars or five dollars the credit boot camp is going to be 50 percent off so if y'all want it y'all don't have to um it don't matter because y'all already got the letters either way also if you didn't get a letter um on the instagram page on under the highlight section i also have letters so if you have late payments there's letters for that that's free if you're if you are a, a group member y'all know the group files has free letters don't ever feel like you got to Purchase a product. Don't ever feel like you can't start your dispute process because you don't have the money. The only thing is I always tell people you're going to make some type of investment. It's either a time or a money investment. If you don't have the money to invest, you have to invest your time. Your time is going to be typing the letters out by yourself. It's not that hard. Honestly, all the letters are less than one page. So theoretically speaking, you can get the letters done in one day. Like, come on. You just have to dedicate that time. You don't want to go through all that. You can pay for the kit. And that's it. That's pretty much it, guys. I really enjoyed your energy tonight. Um... I'm tired. We talked about collections. I hope you feel like you have a better understanding of your collection accounts, a better direction when you are disputing. I hope you learned something. I hope we didn't just spend three hours together for you to not learn uh, something. So real quick before I go, if you guys want me to do another live, what would be the subject? So if I do, I'm, I think I'm going to offer one more free webinar where I actually have a presentation. So I'm going to give you all three options and I need you all to vote really quick. So option one is going to be bankruptcies in public records. Bankruptcies and public records are the same thing. So that's number. So put A, if you want me to talk about do the free webinar on bankruptcies, put B, if you want me to do the free webinar on charge offs or pick three, if you want me to do the free webinar on the steps to home ownership, step by step on what you need to purchase a home, whether you're self-employed, uh, W-2 employee. So again, for option for bankruptcies, put A. For charge-offs, push B. And then for uh, steps to home ownership, push C. And that'll be the next free webinar that I do. It'll be completely free like we did today where I will have the presentation, the letters, and everything. Uh, okay, I'm seeing a lot of Bs. What y'all saying? B, what, what was B? Oh, B is charge-off. Okay, so I'm seeing more Bs. <laughs> Uh-oh, C creeping up. I'm going to go back and look at the replies. It's between C and B, I see. C and B. So it's going to be between steps to home ownership and um, charge offs. So I will let you guys know which one I'm going to do. Also, I'm going to make the code live as soon as I get off. It's going to be L I V E. Let me type it on the screen. All right, so um, use code L I V E. Oh, I should have. And the website is road2750.net, but use code L I V E for 50% off. It'll be for the weekend, Monday. If you're watching this video after Monday, I'm so sorry you missed it. You missed it. It was really supposed to just be a live video. So use code live. Give me about 10 minutes. But yeah, I really enjoyed speaking with you guys tonight. I hope you guys learned something, found valuable information. If you love my teaching methods, make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms because I always teach for free. Um, my Instagram is roll to 750 plus. Uh, and then my TikTok is Shonda Martin underscore. My YouTube channel is roll to 750. All right. So if you, again, resonate with, with the way of my teaching, make sure you follow me because we ain't we don't stop. We don't stop. This is this just the surface. We, we still got so much more to learn. OK, I really love you guys. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for showing so much love. I will talk to you. all I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. So I'll just, the next. No, it ain't going to be tomorrow. I'm going to talk to you all later. Probably Monday. I'm off for the weekend. Uh, and if I do go live on weekends, I typically always go live on TikTok only just because it's just a more casual kind of feel. It ain't working. It's kind of us chilling. So make sure y'all following me on all platforms. But I will. I got to go. I'm sleepy. Get some sleep. Sorry for keeping y'all up. Bye. I'm going to save this. I am going to save it. Y'all have an amazing night.